Oh, there, there was no sound. Oh, dude, sorry about that. Anyway, hello, everybody. Uh, we have our brother Ray who's going to be coming on with us in a second and uh, hopefully sent him the invitation. And uh, we're supposed to start at 8 30, so it's 8 32, two minutes here. And uh, I really wanted to. Uh, I wanted to uh, talk to Ray about a video, a Zachary Naik video that one of my one of my relatives sent me yesterday to just talk about some of the stuff that's in it. And uh, here I'm, I'm waiting to hear from Ray. Just uh, let me see if everything's okay. Make sure. Sometimes uh, stuff happens. So, don't know exactly what's going on, but uh, one of my cousins sent me a Zachary Naik video, and I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to respond to it. You know, I, I, I told my cousin, I said, listen, I much prefer that you come on. I don't want you just to send me videos of Zachary Naik and Ahmed Didat and Shabir Ali and all these guys. I want you to come on and talk. Let's talk, you know. And uh, but he sent the video. So anyway, I want to go ahead and, and, and show that video and uh, and then, then respond to it. I'd like to see if, if Brother Ray is going to come on and uh, he'll, I'm, I'm pretty sure he wanted to be on today. So I think he'll be on here in, in a second. Maybe I ought to call him. Oh, here we are. <laughs> Welcome, Brother Ray. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Sahla Bik. Alan Bik. <laughs> um, I just, uh, I was just telling everybody about uh, that. I have a friend of mine, uh, possibly a cousin, but I think it's, it's like if it's a cousin, it's like a third or fourth or fifth or sixth cousin, like that. You know, I used, yeah. to, I used to know his uh, great grandfather or something like that when I was a kid. You know, because I'm a hundred years old. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, he sent me a video by Zach Edenake. Have you ever heard of Zach Edenake? I'm afraid not. Okay, Zach Edenake is like the big uh, Muslim apologist, and he, uh, he's he been in trouble several times for uh, supporting militant groups and stuff like that. He's been arrested. <laughs> but, yeah. he, but he's very, very popular, and he's got one of the biggest... Um, it's TV stations, Muslim TV stations. Very, I don't know. Have you ever heard of Ahmed Didat? Of course. Yes. Well, he's like the Ahmed Didat of today. He's was, he a, was he also an Ahmadi? Yes. He's a, and he's a, he's got uh, some inter But anyway, my cousin, or I'm not sure if it's a cousin. Yeah. He sent me a video. I, so I just thought we maybe we'd look at it. And then I'd like to hear some of your comments about what he says. If that's okay. okay. Yeah, uh, you know, if anybody comes on who would like to come on with us, we'd uh, we welcome that too. But uh, until then, let's go ahead and uh, just look. First of all, how are you feeling? I'm good. Yeah, feeling good physically. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm all right. Uh -huh. Well, you look good. Thank you. You sound good. So uh, <laughs> you've had your ass examined recently. <laughs> Uh, no, and I don't have my glasses on either. But <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's supposed to be a compliment. <laughs> hey, with all the stuff you say to me, it's like, yeah, you, uh, I live. <laughs> that's all you're gonna get. But <laughs> <Only a stomach. laughs> okay, let's go ahead and see this. Let me see. I think it's on here. Okay, this is Zach and Nika. Hello, hello. Welcome, Slam. Um, I don't know if it's gonna work if I if I make it bigger. I kind of want to make sure. it bigger. Go ahead, make it bigger. The only thing is, I don't know if the sound works when I make it bigger. You know, uh, right. well, you do have to hold. You know, what you try it. Okay, let me go ahead and try this. Alan Ron, first fifty. Can you hear it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is this is Zachary. Okay. It says to follow the teachings of Jesus. Why doesn't anyone do this? Can you mention your name, sister, please? Chastity. 
Sister asked the question that the Quran says in Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse number 50, that we have to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And there are many verses which say that we have to believe in Jesus, peace be upon him. Sister, let me clarify that Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe that he was the Messiah translated Christ. We believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention, which many modern Christians today do not believe. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. The Christian and the Muslim sister, we are going together. But one may ask, where is the parting of ways? The parting of ways is, sister, that many Christians, they say that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he claimed divinity. He said that he was almighty God. If you read the Bible, sister, there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God, or where he says worship me. If any Christian can point okay. out a single unequivocal statement. A okay, so, you know, it goes on a little bit more than that. Is there anything you'd like to talk about? Comment on? No, it's good. Let's listen. Okay, I'll play the rest of it. A single unambiguous statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God, or where he says, worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity today. I am not speaking on behalf of my other Muslim brothers. In fact, if you read the Bible, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John. Chapter number 14, verse number 28. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, My father is greater than I. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29. My father is greater than all. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 28. I cast out devil with the spirit of God. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20. I cast out devil with the finger of God. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. For I seek not my will, but the will of Almighty God. But the will of my Father. Anyone who says that I followed not my will, but the will of Almighty God, he's a Muslim. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, as a Muslim. He never claimed divinity. And it's clearly mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, verse number 22. Ye men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you, by wonders and miracles and signs which God did by him, and you are witness to it. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God. Amongst you, by wonders and miracles which God did by him, and you witnessed to it. So we believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was one of the mightiest messengers of God, but he was not God. So here we differ. As far as the teachings are concerned, your basic question was that Quran says we have to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. When Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, came in this world, he was only sent for the Jews, only for Bani Israel. The Quran says clearly in Surah Saf, chapter number 61, verse number 6, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, came as a messenger to the Bani Israel. It's mentioned in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse 49, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was sent only for the Bani Israel. It's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 10, verse number 5 and 6, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. He says, go ye not into the way of the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? Non-Jews, Hindus, Muslims. Go ye not in the way of the Gentiles. Enter ye not into the city of the Samaritans, but rather go to the house of the Lordship of Israel. And a similar message is repeated in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 15, verse number 24. He says to the apostles that I have been sent not but to the Lordship of the house of Israel. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was sent only for the Bani Israel. And his message was supposed to be followed only for a particular time period. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Quran says. In spite of this, sister, if you read the Bible, what Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, if you analyze, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Luke, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was circumcised on the eighth day. The Muslim, mashallah, we are circumcised. Majority of the Christians aren't circumcised. 
So if you say that following the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, makes you a Christian, then I like to say that I am more Christian than the Christian themselves. It is mentioned in the Bible. In the book of Ephesians, chapter number 5, verse number 18, that be not drunk. It's mentioned in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 20, verse number 1, that wine is a mocker. We Muslims, we don't drink alcohol. Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 90, alcohol is haram, we don't touch it. We don't touch it as a whole. The Muslims are the biggest community of teetotalers. So according to the Bible, you should not have alcohol. It's mentioned in the Bible that you should not have pork in several places. It's mentioned in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 11, verse number 7 and 8. It's mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 8. In the book of Isaiah, chapter number 65, verse number 2 to 5, no less than five places that you should not have pork. We Muslims, we don't have pork. But majority of the Christians, they have pork. So if Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we Muslims are more Christian than the Christians themselves. I can go on and on. When Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was asked that which is the first of the commandments, he mentioned in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 12, verse number 29, he said, Shama Israelo Adnaihino Adnaihad. It's a Hebrew quotation which means, Yoro Israel, the Lord, our God is one Lord. We Muslims, mashallah, we believe in none but one God. Majority of the Christians, they believe in Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So if you say Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves. And you can refer to my video cassette, similarities between Islam and Christianity, which will give you more details that we are following more of the Bibles, the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, than the Christian themselves. Hope that answers the question, sister. May I request? Okay. Okay. Um, this is this. You, you notice what he left out? Oh, he le he he left out a lot. <laughs> no, no, no. He left out the central issue. See, I ask you, I ask you if he was Ahmadi like Ahmadi that. Yeah. I, I, I would like to have heard him say what he thought about the cross. Because the Ahmadis believe that Jesus was crucified. Yes, and he swooned. And he, he, was, he was swooned and he revived by Mirham Isa. Yeah. And then went to India, uh, lived to 120 years old, got married, had kids, and is yeah. buried there in a tomb of Yusuf in Kashmir, in Srinagar. Uh, I've been very interested in, in hearing him deal with the cross well, because if he did and believe like the Ahmadis, he'd be a kafir. According See, to I, <laughs> this is what this is what's got you upset at me a bit is that I believe he, he quoted all the verses that I'd quote and saying that there's many times where the Muslims keep the the, the teachings of Jesus and the Bible more than the Christians. Because of the traditions, uh, he's excellent. He's he's very smart. He's uh, smart like our friend Allah, because he knows many of these verses. But the point, the one he, the main point that he doesn't deal with, the sticking point, and probably because he's, if he's Ahmadi. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want he is he doesn't want to reveal that because he would be booed out by the Sunnis. Well, you know what? He there's many videos of him talking. Well, he believes in the swoon theory. Yeah. He believes that Jesus swooned and then and well, then he, and then he came well, back to life, you know. Yeah, he's a heretic. He's a heretic uh, as far as the Muslims concerned and a trickster as far as the Christians are concerned. Yes, so yes. The, central, the central issue, and it's not worth our while even coming on at night, if it wasn't for the historical event of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus was crucified. There's not a Jew. There's not a Jew anywhere. And I'm sure that Allah's... Uh, 
rabbi who taught him, he he very much believed that Jesus was crucified. I'll bet you he didn't deny it. Because the Jews have suffered. They've suffered uh, the loss of millions of their people because of their refusal to accept Jesus as Messiah. But they blame it on the Christians because of the crucifixion. You see, mm -hmm. they they think that the Christians, which may be true to, about some Christians, accuse the Jews of having killed Jesus. And I even heard another uh, broadcast today, and I was I wasn't an invited speaker, or I would have corrected one of the teachers when he quoted from the Quran about the Shubha Uh huh. See, the Quran is historically correct when it says that the Jews did not kill Jesus. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and uh, people, you know, want to build a case. They want to build a case and follow the old teachings of the, of the Gnostic heresy that Jesus only appeared to die. But that's not what the Quran says. It only appeared to the Jews, that is, it was a thing that, because the Romans were the ones who actually historically killed Jesus. They were the, the jealous scribes, Pharisees, or political rulers who were losing their income. Because Jesus, uh, similar to what, in a way, uh, there, is a, there is a similarity to Muhammad in Mecca. He was a member of the Hilmul Fuzl. He was a member of like the Bez Better Business Bureau of Mecca, and he was opposed to the exploitation of pilgrims to Mecca. And part of the resistance that he had there was because um, he opposed the Quraysh in their exploitation of these people. But uh, Jesus went into the temple, threw out the money changers, and the animals for sacrifice, they were making money. They were making a money exploitation of the, of the people doing their pilgrimages to the temple. So that was one of the main reasons that instigated the, uh, the Jewish leaders to side with the Romans and to trick the Romans into killing Jesus. So anyway, anyway, he avoids the cross. That, that I want to make a note of. I want to commend him for being such a thorough scholar of the Bible. But the problem is, and it's not just his problem, it's that we have to admit sometimes it's our problem. He selects the verses that he chooses to believe in. See, I would ask him, will you believe all this? You believe all this about the Bible and about Jesus? That's wonderful. That, that should mean a, a real life change. Does he believe when John the Baptist says, repent and be baptized? Because he, he would have to change his way of thinking and be baptized as a commitment to God. And later on, the Christians adapted this, uh, took the, the Jewish baptism, and it was repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Uh, no, this is, uh, I thought it was uh, very interesting. Um, this whole, this whole uh, chasing the rabbit, I have a, I have a couple of acres here. And um, my wife keeps looking out the window and says, why don't you clear up this brush pile? I keep piling up this brush and eventually it caves in. It's a, um, because it would take his, it would take me thousands of dollars to have that brush chipped and hauled away, but it's it's a place where the animals, the the rabbits and the squirrels all have their nests in there, and it may be a bobcat or two. Um, but these these people, unfortunately, they chase the rabbits on this thing about Jesus saying he was God or not. All you have to do is read the book, read the history, talk to the people who've experienced Jesus and the change he's made in their lives. 
and then even the Quran itself lifts him above every prophet, including the the prophet of Islam. He's more, he's better, he does everything better. He's a word from God, spirit from him, everything. He's closest to God in heaven. And, uh, you know, all of this about Jesus, if, if people would just believe what the books say about him, and then they would experience him through the power of the Holy Spirit, that's the Trinity. The Trinity is God coming to us through the words of Jesus and the words of the prophets, convicting of our sin, and then the Holy Spirit of God does this work internally. Jesus came to give us the Spirit of God, the Spirit that Adam lost in his rebellion in the garden, to turn us back to the Garden of Eden. And that's what we will find when we die, if you know Jesus. In fact, he'll come and get you. He's prepared a place for us, and he will come again and take us to himself. So the amazing thing about it is, this brother, as well as our other brother, quotes the Bible frequently and memorizes the Bible totally. So my question is, is just my challenge is believe it. Believe it. Don't just use it as a sword to jab your enemy or your, your opponent in a debate. Take it into your heart. Let God stab you in the heart and bring you to a recognition of who you are before God and what is your future. Well, this is the wonderful thing about these guys that are, this guy just, he, he taught more from the Bible than he did from the Quran. So, but, but the, the problem is, is the big omission. And the big omission was the cross because it's on the cross, a historical event where Jesus suffered and died unjustly, undeservedly, and the Muslims are correct that, uh, that why would God let this happen to a pure, sinless prophet? It's a mystery. It's a mystery because God is love. The, this is where the Christians help the Muslims, where the Bible helps the Muslims, where Muhammad says, you don't get this answer from me, you go to the people who had the book before you, because the book before you tells you that God, all the attributes of God, the 99 names, there's one name that's missing, and that is God is love. And that's the name that the New Testament gives to God and that Jesus gives to him. This is the unique experience of, of, the, uh, of the Bible is that the God of heaven would love this creation so much that he would send Jesus to sacrifice himself to cleanse us of sin and to make us worthy of heaven through his sacrifice. The only assurance and the only assurance of eternal life is through Jesus and what he did on the cross for us. And, and, and the proof of it, it, the proof is, again, another historical event. I mean, the, the crucifixion was witnessed by thousands of people. And in the most intimate sense, by the mother of Jesus himself standing at the cross, and John, his, ma his main friend and disciple, who he turned over his mother to for her care when he died. And these others all standing around and all the Roman soldiers, all the people of Jerusalem saw Jesus being crucified. So that's a historical event. Write, write it down in history. Write it in rock because it's true. It happened. Whatever you think about Christianity of Islam or whatever else or whatever philosophy, if you don't even care about religion in general, you know this is a historical event. And you, by faith and by action, every moment of every day, confess to it. And you know how? 2021. We still date every day of the year 
after the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, I know the Muslims have their own calendar. That's fine, but it came six, seven hundred years later. After, after the Hijra. So, we testify to it every day. To the life, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the resurrection itself also, that's why Paul is so important. And uh, because Paul comes along and writes down about the witnesses to the resurrection. You had the apostles that are around him, and you had at least 500 other people. 500 is pretty good. That'll stand up in court. So here, whatever, whatever you believe, here is historical fact. And that's what you always have to deal with. Mm -hmm. I can, I can, I can lose my faith in all sorts of religions and denominations and political structures. But when it comes right down to it, I have to accept the reality of the historical facts of Jesus, his life, his teachings, his death, and his resurrection. And that's what this man, he avoided that because he knew he was in trouble. He'd be in trouble with the Christians and with the Muslims if he had told if he got into that subject. Well, he, he does talk about it and he talks about the swoon theory. He says that you know what he says is like uh it's similar to what Alat said the other day. I don't know if you heard what Alat says. Uh Alat was uh on another live stream and he said Jesus when he said he'll be like the serpent that was that Moses lifted up and that yeah. the serpent wasn't a real serpent. And so he's saying it wasn't the real Jesus on the cross. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. First time I ever heard that that explanation. You know, I can. Yeah, I can. This is a symbol that's used for the medical profession. You know. Yeah. The medical profession uses that very symbol of the of the snake. Yes. It's 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 uh, the whole idea of the inoculation. Mm hmm. So anyway. Well, you know that's the. Uh, you know that's the thing that uh, um, oh, I was telling you what 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 Zachir Naik says because I've done programs about him before. Yeah, he's so famous. He's very famous. And uh, and anyway, one thing that he says he says that uh, Jesus said that like uh, Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days, the Son of Man will be in the belly of the earth. He says, yeah. was Jonah dead? No, he was alive in the belly of the whale. In yeah. the same way Jesus was alive, he did it. Uh -huh. And so that's that's his that's what he how he explains away the death and resurrection. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I yeah we we know what he's doing. Yeah, uh, but the, again again here you got the historical record. What are you going to do with the historical record? Yeah, that he was nailed to the cross. That it was time to. It was the the it was a uh, it was a high high Shabbat. It was a high holiday. They had to finish him up and get him off the cross, all three of them, in order not to pollute Jerusalem, the city, during the holiday. And uh, so they came by, and they they broke the legs of the other two thieves. In order to make sure they died, they broke their legs, you know, smashed them with a hammer or whatever. But with Jesus, they saw he was already dead, and so they stabbed him with a spear. And then water and blood flew out, which was indicative that Jesus didn't die just from the being hanging on the cross. He died from a burst heart. The, the blood and the water had already separated. He was dead. So these are these are medical proofs. Wow. Anyway, at, you know. How, how is that? What, what does that mean, though, that the water and the blood were separated? I heard that medically it just showed that uh, Jesus was dead, and this is what happens when the heart bursts, that the... Um, 
that it had been long enough since he died that the the blood had co coagulated. Mm -hmm. The serum had separated from the whatever. I'm not a medical person, so I don't know how to explain it, but I've heard that said about it. Mm -hmm. You you know another thing that uh, that I've been really blessed by lately is the whole issue of eyewitnesses. Oh gracious, yes. You know that yeah. that Christianity, the death of Jesus, the resurrection is all based on eyewitness testimony. Yeah. yeah, and you've got you've got not one record written record of it, not two written re records. Not just three, you've got four, four written records. And, and, the, and the interesting thing is, is, is that those who want to make, you know, everything cozy and, and logical according to their human instinct, they say, well, this doesn't agree with that. And that what, what four witnesses of any event will give the same testimony? Yeah. They will all see it from their perspective. So you have these four four witnesses. Of course, now Luke uh, got his problem for Mary. You see, that's that's what's amazing to me. Yeah, he was a medical doctor. He was not even a Jew. He was a Gentile medical doctor. And so he gets his examination for a a a Gentile, uh, maybe Roman official. He's doing a scouting exposition to find out what was the real truth about Jesus and why all this stir up in the empire. And so he was writing this record down for Theophilus, for the Roman Roman official. And he picked up these testimonies. That's why, uh, in fact, I'm, I'm reading uh, Luke 14 and 15. We have a new pastor in our church, and he's assigned he's assigned everybody to read the Bible through in a year. And uh, I figured, well, I might as well get with it too again. And reading it, and here here you got the Sermon on the Mount. And so my question is, uh, Matthew has the Sermon on the Mount all in one capsule from uh, Matthew five, uh, I think, up to. Seven. Uh, seven. He's got it all cozy in what we would call a Christian catechism. But Luke, he scatters it throughout mm. his gospel because he's picking this up from people who heard it. He's picking up from multiple sources. And so here you have Jesus speaking parts of the Sermon on the Mount in Luke 15 and 16. Well, it could just be like all preachers, like all of us, he didn't just teach this one time. He may have taught it multiple times in multiple sermons all over all over the country. So it's either that that Luke gets this from these test these uh, these witnesses that heard it or memorized it and saw it and he puts it together in his order that he gets his interviews or it could be that jesus simply uses the same truth over again mm -hmm. i would you know the other way you know one thing that i was uh really for some reason the other day i read this and it just jumped on me. it was just like jumped out of the book into my face it was amazing to me and this is what luke wrote uh he's talking about when the word of the lord came to john it's, yeah just listen to all of these levels of validation, level yep. of verification. There you go. In That's the, a historical record right there. Yeah, in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when yep. Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod, tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, tetrarch of Uturia, Trachonitis and Licinius, tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. I mean, you got like seven different levels of ver yeah. verification, geographical and historical. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Here, he, this guy's, he's narrating history. He's yeah. pinning it down to show this Roman official that he's writing for.
Yes. This happened in space and in time at a particular place. He's giving you an accurate record. You, you know, you know, one guy said about this, he says, this is so, I mean, I, you know, if you were to try to do something like this today, you would say while Biden was in, in the third year of Biden's yeah. presidency, while Gavin Newsom was governor of California yeah. and, and James Smith was the governor, was the mayor of Los Angeles yeah. and, and, uh, Sue uh, Smalley was the mayor of uh, at Phoenix, Arizona, and mm -hmm. and uh, and the Pope was uh, you know <laughs> Francis. You know this is what this is like. It's it's so in, it's so detailed geographically mm -hmm. and historically. And you know what one guy said about this? He said if Luke was this detailed about this one particular thing, which is when the word of the Lord came to John. If he yeah. was so detailed about that, how much more about all the really important stuff? Oh, well, yeah. Crucifixion and the resurrection and the eyewitness, you know, and uh, so I, I'm uh, uh, why, why, why do we don't do, why do we not have to do that today? Mm -hmm. Why? Here, here this guy, he's given four, like you say, four different levels of historical authentication Yeah. to put it in history at a particular time. Now, why do we not have to do that today? Because we got the internet. No, just kidding. <laughs> no, because Jesus Christ, the year 2021, in the month of March, in the day the... 14th of month or whatever. <laughs> We've got it pinned down mathematically by the calendar because of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. All this other stuff you're adding is just, you know, fluff. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, you know, it just, but it, when you got that much authentic, yeah. that much, and he does this at the beginning too when he's talking to Theophilus and he tells Theophilus, this is based on eyewitnesses. Exactly. And then you said, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight the path. You'll go on down there somewhere and you'll see what he says, repent, repent. Yes. This is what they always miss. In fact, I, I, I even heard somebody one time criticize the four spiritual laws. Used by Campus Crusade, and I, I had them printed by the thousands in Jerusalem. That's how I got saved. In fact, I shared it today. I, I, the pastor I went to after my visitation uh, led me through the four spiritual laws. So, <laughs> so what was the word? One word missing in the four spiritual laws? Repent. Exactly. Oh, uh, exactly. But you repented. <laughs> you didn't stay the way you were. <laughs> I hope you changed. Now, maybe this is why some of your relatives are mad at you. Maybe ah. you didn't think that much. <laughs> I knew I was going to get, I was going to get uh, at least one jab. So <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> they knew you better than I did. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, some, some lady just came on a while ago and said, God bless you. I bless you back, sister. Yeah. So, exactly. you know, you, you you know that 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 whole issue of Mary, what Mary, uh, how much Mary, uh, you know, because it's based on eyewitness. Everything. I mean, uh, Luke says that his gospel is based on eyewitness. It's like he is a witness of the eyewitnesses. Yes, and, he's and, right, right in the record. And so. Uh, how, do you know anything about Mary in particular in regard to the gospel of Luke? Because like, it says things that only only she would have known, you know. Right. Well, amazingly, having lived in Nazareth 26 years, there's a lot, a lot of uh, traditions about Mary that are not necessarily uh, in the New Testament, but it gives you an understanding of, of, of what was going on. Um it said there that Mary was from uh, her parents lived in um, Sephori. Sephori, which is down the hill from Nazareth, about three or four miles. It's a large um, Roman ruins. Um, 
and that she was the sister her sister was the was the mother of James and John the sons of Zebedee from Yafia oh. oh okay Yafia of Nazareth we have a center there I you had the privilege of starting that uh, ministry with a local family in 1967. In fact, I can remember the planes flying over <laughs> during the war. Wow. Uh, and uh, we've got a little church there, but it said that James and John, the sons of Zebedee, that they were actually Jesus' cousins. I didn't know that. Wow. Well, that's all this stuff. Uh, you get some of that. I've got some of this from uh, an Egyptian pastor friend who studied it even deeper. So there was already a family relationship. And this is why um, uh, she came. Their mother came to Jesus and said, now, I want one of my boys to stand on your, be on your right and one on your left in your kingdom. So she's saying, in other words, by local tradition, we're blood, we're family. So we come first in your kingdom. I want my son, your cousin on this side and this, your cousin on the left. So this is all part of the uh, folklore and traditions and maybe true. You know, that a lot of times there, there's some truth in those, uh, you know, in some of those uh, legends and some of those, uh, you know. Yeah, it, it, clarifies, it clarifies some of the relationships. Yeah. Cause Jesus was, uh, and they all went down. See, Nazareth is up a thousand feet. It's like Temecula. You're near San Diego. My my daughter lives up there, and they had they had um, snow. They had snow and hail. Oh, I during, remember. During the cold spell the other day. Yeah, I was. And Nazareth, Nazareth is the same way. It's up there, but the Sea of Galilee is 600 feet below, and that's only 30 miles. It's a good walk, 15, 20 miles down in the valley. And they all they used to go down there during the winter, and fish, mm -hmm. and cultivate uh, gardens, vegetables. And there are still Arabs today, good friends of mine, who still do that. They have their little little huts and their little uh, house down there, about a mile in from the sea, and and they spend their winters down there where it's warm. Not snowing and nailing up there in the mountains above. Wow. <laughs> it's still done to this very day. Wow. So that whole scene is so familiar when you when you're living out there. Yeah. Because I know there's a there's a a high Nazareth and a low Nazareth, right? That's uh, that's uh <laughs> Nazareth is on it's in a it's in a dip in the valley. Uh, you got Armageddon, you've got the Valley of Megiddo, and you've got a, a mountain that goes almost straight up. That was the Mount of Precipitation where the the Nazarenes brought Jesus to throw him off when they didn't like what he preached in the synagogue to them. But then you have another dip above that because of, there's a little, little valley up in the, in the mountains there, and that's Nazareth. And it's ringed, ringed by this uh, horseshoe, actually a horseshoe shape of mountain and Nazareth is down there in, in the in the valley. And uh, on one side is ancient Nazareth and the valley's ancient Nazareth and up up the hill it's grown up to that hill um, to the west and to the east around the other part of the horseshoe, the Jews have built a large settlement town. They call it Upper Nazareth in okay. Hebrew Iliad. not Friday Elite. I, okay, and the only difference, if the only way a Jew could tell where I was from, if I said Nazareth, I'd have to say, not said it. They would know that's Lower Nazareth or Arab Nazareth. Oh, not. Said but if it. I said not Trot, that's mm. Upper Nazareth. Okay. They have their own way of signaling each other about where you lived. Well, in Arabic, it's Nasira. Nasira, yeah, Nasira. Yeah. It's not for El Olia, not for El, El Adi. <laughs> yeah. Well, I used to love it. Oh, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful city. It's a, you can 
ride up the hill and look out over the city at night is, is absolutely beautiful. Wow. Uh, and then uh, over, dipping down over the Mount of Precipitation, you have the whole Valley of Israel, the Valley of Israel, Armageddon, on the way to Megiddo. It's, it's a such a totally beautiful place. Wow. Uh, yeah. I've been there many times into the Sea of Galilee and everything. And so, you know, that. but, you know, with the Gospel of Luke, you know, I was thinking about, you know, oh, how about Matthew? Do you know where Matthew got his information about the nativity? You know, Matthew was a government employee. He's what they call in Hebrew a yeki. A yeki is a person who keeps the detail of everything and counts every penny. Yeah. He was an official of the Roman government. He was a Jew working for the Roman government, collecting taxes. <laughs> so he himself was a very, very uh, exacting person. And he was, uh, he was keeping down a record of, of uh, what was going on and what he knew. Of course, um, he met Jesus probably many years later when Jesus was about 30 years old. So he got much of this information. He could have gotten, I don't know, I haven't ever studied that. But uh, he would have an accurate record also from yeah. a different perspective. Luke was a Gentile doctor. Yeah. He had his own agenda to uh, show this Roman official what was going on. Well, I heard, that, I heard that his, uh, Luke was the... I heard this. I never heard it before, but I heard yeah. that Luke was compiling actually a defense for Paul in the court. A good possibility. Yeah. So that. Possibility. Just, yes. And he, very, yeah. <laughs> That'd be kind of that would be a write a mystery book about <laughs> maybe maybe Luke was late in getting the word to this guy. <laughs> Paul lost his head because of it. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, wow. You know, when I think about the eyewitness testimony, you know, it just, that's such a powerful thing, you know. And then yeah. the fact that in 1 Corinthians 15, it says over 500 saw Jesus after he rose again. Right. Well, you see now, Matthew, by the way, Matthew had every word of the Sermon on the Mount. Every word. Oh, yeah, the, the Beatitudes, which we started the other day. He had all of the entire Beatitude, the whole line. Luke only had the first line of each Beatitude. Oh. See, Luke is picking it up from uh, people who are trying to remember this, who were maybe how many years earlier, see? And they, this is what they remembered the punchline. They would get the first first sentence of the line, and then they would forget the second, they'd get the second. And this is the way we do in, in with our memory. So Luke would not, uh, he put them together in short um, sayings. Mm -hmm. Whereas Matthew, he has the entire wording. And it all concise in a record. He was like a scribe transcribing the words as he heard them. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's a, that's such an, I love that subject, you know, about the different gospels and how they were written, uh, yeah. you know, and, uh, Hey, uh, I, I, yeah. I, I think, Tim, I, I think I, right. I'm going to respond to Tim has written about a uh, Matthew written in Aramaic or Hebrew. There's still talk about it. Um, among scholarship in, in Jerusalem. And there is the tradition, you know, it would, true or maybe not, that Waraka ibn Nofal in Mecca, who was related to Khadijah, who was actually uh, like a priest of Mecca, that he taught from this uh, a Hebrew manuscript. But the, we've never found it and never have any actual proof or Aramaic is possible. I heard that uh, I heard that Waraka bin Nofel and and Khadija were Ebionites. And that's that, possible also. 
Yeah, and that they uh, and that one of the things that the Ebionites uh, teach, you know, that they they believe in the Gospel of Matthew, and yeah. and they he was translated it from the Hebrew into the Arabic. It's possible. And that's one thing I heard. So, uh, uh, yeah. you bring all that on. It's just that we. The problem is, is uh, by that time, 600 years later, they were going more by oral tradition than by written. Yeah. That's why, you know, I commend Muhammad that he advised his followers. If there's something I can't answer for you and something you're you uh, know, curious about, then please go to the people who read the book before me. He trusted, he trusted the book and he trusted people who had read the Torah and the Injil that, that they would tell him, they would tell them the truth about it. And that's, uh, that's the reason for this. People who grow up in an oral, oral society use their memories for everything and they put it to poetry. That's why the Quran is uh, such a valuable book for the Arabs at that time because it, they sing it. They chant it. They don't just uh, repeat it as we Westerners would do in a classical Arabic. They, it has a sing song. It has a, a rhyme, uh, a musical chant to it. Mm -hmm. That sticks to the memory. Yeah. The early church, uh, the Byzantine church and the, uh, the early Catholic and Orthodox churches in the Middle East still to this day they chant the scriptures. They do. You, know, you, ask a priest, you ask a priest to report, repeat, repeat a verse for you, he'll sit there and get the tune, and then he will give it to you in a tune. Mm -hmm. That's how he memorizes it. Yeah. I know the, uh, the Copts, I mean, you know, because when I went, I, I mean, I start, when I start hearing the, with the Coptic church, I mean, it sounds very similar to what you hear from the mosque, you know, the, uh, when they're yeah. teaching the well, you know, yeah. except for you hear the words of life, you know, from the scriptures. Yeah. But, um, okay. uh, Allah has come on, says, brother, God bless you. How are you today? I'm fine, Allah. God bless you. I sent you an invitation, Allah, if you want to come on. And Allah, if you're listening, I just want to tell you this. Father Zechariah is going to be with me tomorrow. He's going to be with me at one. If you would like to talk to him, wait until after his lesson. After the lesson is done, then I can bring you on if you want to talk to Father Zechariah. Okay, but not before. But it has to be after because he's doing a lesson. After his lesson, if you come on, you want to come on and talk to Father Zechariah, come on tomorrow. But talk to him after the lesson, not before. Well, that's your charge if you're in charge. Yeah. That. I'm in charge, man. Rock and roll. <laughs> At least I could be in charge here as Palestinians aren't in charge. You know, we're always someone. Well, they, they had a big, big, uh, they had a big thing on television yesterday about it. About what? About the whole history and conflict and all. They had they had your brothers out there with their slingshots and their stone throws and all that. <laughs> you know what? Uh, when I was uh, when I went to visit my uh, cousins when I was younger, when 1989. Uh, some Jewish soldiers were coming and some of my cousins and, and closer than cousins, brothers were going out to go sling rocks at the Jews. I know, I know. I, and I told my brother, I said, I'm coming with you. He says, you don't know how to throw rocks. I says, I'm not going to throw rocks. I'm not going to throw rocks. And he says, well, you get shot. I said, well, you'll probably get shot too. So we'll get shot together. So yeah. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't go. So praise God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you it's know, so yes, it yes, yeah. So, <laughs> hey, I let I sent you an invitation on YouTube if you want. Right. To on. He'll come in his own time. Yeah. So, what else did you have in your mind that you wanted me to scold you about? <laughs> <laughs> I I always need a scolding, but uh, that's all right. You have you have me, and I have my children. <laughs> they come and my grandchildren, they they make jokes and remind me of things I used to do and say and things they used to get along, get away with that I didn't know about. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> well, you know, I just I want to tell you, I want to tell you something. Um, I'm amazed. You know, I grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina, and actually, I started out only 15 minutes down the road from Billy Graham's home mm -hmm. on Park Road. His wow. family used to own a, a big uh, dairy farm down in off Park Road. They took the brick house that he grew up in and moved it over to, across town to the airport. Oh. And, and he's buried over there, he and his wife, uh, Ruth. Mm -hmm. So uh, the thing I'm totally amazed about is his children are all preaching the gospel and yeah. all following the Lord. You know, Franklin and I uh, used to give out the shoe boxes to the Palestinians and to the Israeli kids and work with Franklin on that. And then I met, uh, I met two of his daughters, uh, or I met all of his family, actually, and his wife, Ruth. I never met Billy Graham himself mm. because of a, I took a vow. I took a vow when I met the Little East. There's only two people I wanted to see before I died. And I'd already met, I met one of them there. And so I didn't want to meet Billy Graham. It was it was Roy Whitman, oh. Roy Whitman and Jordan. And I met Roy. He was a senior missionary, Jamaican, English, beautiful Arabic, a wonderful man. He See, taught me. the Alliance Church. Probably. Yes. Yeah. I remember hearing about him from yeah, the he was he was such a great person. He taught me a lot. He taught me a lot about the, the churches and the, and about everything else, and um, but I just today found a a brochure that that uh, Graham's grandson is preaching. Oh yeah, Franklin. Oh, yeah. No, Franklin. It must be Franklin's son or one of his other grandchildren. Praise his God. Grandchildren God. Still. Well, you know, Franklin went off on his little rebellious thing for a while, but he came back, you know, so. <laughs> I'm least, sorry. Did you hear, you know, that Franklin rebelled for a long time, but then he, he came were, back. He used to ride a motorcycle here in Escondido. His dad, uh, they, a friend of his family gave him a vacation home near Lawrence Welk Retirement uh, Vacation Center. Oh, really? They used to spend their summers down here. Oh. So Franklin, Franklin used to ride his motorcycle in and out of here. And this is the first place that Franklin chose to preach in when he did his campaign out west last uh, two years ago. You were in Southern California, you mean? Yes, sir. He came to Escondido was the first place. Oh. He came out you, know the what? you know what? I think I remember that because yeah. uh, I was engaged to a girl from whose family is down there and, uh, and we were coming back and, uh -huh. uh, and, and I, I remember hearing about, I think Franklin Graham was coming or something. So, yep. yeah. Yep. He was here in Grape Day Park. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, they have history here. This is where they used to spend their summers. Well, you know, Southern California has had so many great, great, great revivals here. You know, it needs it. we need a big one now. Yeah, in Jesus' name, Lord God, yeah. Lord Spirit, in Jesus' name. I think it's going to start uh, here in Anaheim, and yeah. I'm going to start it. Anyway, thank you, Dragon, for your wish for me to have many years. God has given me unbelievable. I'm 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 in total mystery. I'm in mystery about three things: how many years He's giving me, how He gave me Jesus. And he gave me my wife, the most beautiful woman I've ever known. I can't believe it. I got to marry that woman. Oh. I got married to her after 63 years. <laughs> oh, I'm jealous now. I got two of them. I know. I want to make you jealous. I'm glad to make all the young men jealous. <laughs> I got two out of three, but, it, it, you know, there, there used to be oh, a no, Look, look I, lie. I had uh, not a lot. Uh, <laughs> pardon me. Uh, <laughs> I had, I had similar experiences to that. Don't don't think that everyone's had an easy life. 
All of us get rejected. Mm. But you cry for only one night. Dude, but I get done crying, and then and then there, then I got another reason to cry next week. <laughs> yeah, you see, that's it. No, God always gives you the person He has for you if you're ready for that person. Dude, I'm 140 years old, man. I'm ready. You'll have to get. You'll have to have a shave before you. <laughs> have to have a what? <laughs> you'll have to trim your beard, man. Oh. <laughs> I tell you what, if I take this off, I look like I'm 40 years old, man. Like, <laughs> well, well, <laughs> yeah. It, it just, just it it just and <laughs> so, well, it's, uh, you know, it was great talking about, I really love to talk about the, uh, the eyewitnesses. That's something oh, that. Yeah. Well, know, here, see, it's not, Here's the here's the other here's beyond all this, eyewitnesses is history. That's all two thousand years ago, and you could go back to Adam and Eve. What six thousand, seven thousand, or how many? That's all history. Yeah. What's really real to you and me today is God's alive today. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit's alive today. His word still speaks today. Yeah, That's the miracle of it. Hallelujah. Amen. And people are changed. They're they're changed from drug addicts, from suicide, from all sorts of terrible, wicked things that people do to each other. God changes their hearts and gives them new life and a new goal and a new ambition. That's that's where it really counts now. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know what? That's what happened to me. You know, it was like you know, uh, I didn't know that much about Christianity. Well, I did. I used to read in the encyclopedias and stuff. I was always interested in the prophets and the Bible and stuff. And uh, But just one night, Jesus came. And it was like, you know, it was so powerful. It changed me right there, right then. Amen. You know, I just knew that uh, I knew that he was the son of God. I knew he died on the cross for me. I knew he rose again for me. And, uh, I didn't believe that before, but when he came, I knew it. And when he came, the funny thing is, he, it was like he was an old friend, like I had known him before. <laughs> I was just like, oh, Jesus. You know, it's just like, yeah, <laughs> like I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> well, that's a big, uh, <laughs> a big uh, difference in, in understanding about God. That he's not just for, he's not just a holy yeah. ruler, judge, yes, dictator, and one who's always going to smash you <laughs> for your sins. Jesus, Jesus puts a whole new face on God. You see, it's the it's the true meaning of the Rahman Rahim. Jesus gives the true picture. He adds, he explains it in one word, mahabba. Mahabba. Yeah. Now, it doesn't mean he's a he's a wimp. It doesn't mean he lets you get by with anything. And he doesn't mean that he doesn't judge evil. But he, he provides a way of escape for a man. There's no temptation that will take you except what you're able to resist because God gives you a way to escape. So he puts a whole new face on God. You asked me the other day, what do you believe about Jesus? Well, the only thing I know about God is what Jesus teaches me. It's through the word, the testimony of the word, and the revelation in my heart that, uh, he, that when I get before the throne, before the judgment, it's going to be Jesus. I can't stand alone. It's got to be him. He's the one who takes our place. And he did that. He did that on the proof of it. He did it on the cross. And he does it through the Holy Spirit as our intercessor. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what happened to me. So, 
Hey, Alet, how are you? New Hi, man. Salam alaikum. <laughs> Welcome. How are you coming here? Yeah, we can hear you. Coming? Okay, good, good, good. Actually, I don't have much to say. I just wanted to say hi to our brother Ray. Oh, I'm yeah. So glad. Huh? I'm so glad that you're hi to using me. my words. I'm glad that you're using my words. You said, I'll school you. Ah. I love it once you said, I'll school you. Mm. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, I, I, I was I was that here from the beginning because actually I was having a discussion on another channel with five or six pastors, and we had a very nice discussion for more than one hour. But sadly, after we finished the discussion, they deleted right away. I was disappointed. Why did they delete it? I was planning actually to record it and to <laughs> upload it. Actually, one of the pastors was offended at the end. They called up one of them, and he came, I don't know, as backup or what. Then he started attacking, and he was so frustrated, and he was shouting. I apologized to them. I said, sorry, I didn't mean to offend anybody here. I really wanted to upload it on my channel, but sadly that now it says that this video is unavailable. I was so sad. It's in the channel of Pastor Jason. Pastor Jason, he's one of the speakers from uh, Speaker's Corner. He's been a pastor for more than 25 years, and he was a pastor in Ghana. But luckily, I was able to record almost three-fourths of the conversation, and I will upload it. So I hope that, Ray, you can watch it. It's a very uh, interesting discussion, really, with five or six of them. And they're <laughs> all pastors. They even introduced themselves to me. So, Xander, um What's his name? Pastor Jason, what would be his... Uh, yeah, his, uh, he's very well, he's well known he's in Speaker's Corner in England. In Europe. Corner, they, know him. Okay. they know him. They know him. Most of them Great. know him. Yeah, I'll try to give a listen to it. I always yeah, I'll get send it. You. After I upload the video, I'll send it to you by FB so you can watch it. Because I was able to record around 30 minutes, 35 minutes. But Great. at the end of the video, it said, this video is unavailable. Mm -hmm. Then I started going back to the beginning. <laughs> I went to his channel. It's unavailable. Even during the recording. When I was <laughs> recording the video, you will find at the end, screen became black. I said, uh, this video uh, is unavailable. Maybe because so it was it was deleted. Of, he lost his cool. <laughs> didn't want to no, no, I don't know. I was really surprised. I know the, I know Pastor Jason and Pastor Mike, they're good. We had yeah. several debates together in the past. My first debate was with them. Is Jesus God for more than three hours. And it's uploaded uh -huh. in my channel. Yeah, it's in my channel. So you I was surprised that he deleted that he was, right? Huh? Yeah, I, <laughs> he was. Let, let, let me tell you something. When I talk about the deity of Jesus, I always use the Unitarian argument. So I don't yeah. bring my own argument. I bring argument of those Christians who base their <laughs> argument on the Bible as the Unitarian. So I don't bring something from you me. You know who was the founder of the Unitarian faith? I'm not sure. Uh, I don't okay, know. I'll, 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 I don't. I'll just give you a hint. In fact, I sent uh, Steve something. I can also send it to you. I know his name, but I forgot it. Believe me. I know. I studied about him. What's okay, his you name? Want, you want me to tell you or you want to find out? I, I remember. I really know I his name. Uh, his name was Servitas. I've read about him a whole book, volume of books in Arabic language. Spanish and he... He was in conflict with John Calvin, and he had views about Jesus and the Trinity that uh, you will recognize them maybe even better than me because you studied the uh, Eastern Orthodox and the Coptics and the difference. You in know, the Arius, Arius, Father Arius or Priest Arius, or Arius, well, Arius, Arius may have he may have had something. He, I yes, there. they are one of the oneness, the Unitarian, and I studied about no, him. Arias, about Arias it. is uh, another uh, issue. I'll have to, I'll have to uh, dig uh, it in. That, um, that, that's what I'm talking about. I've learned a lot of argument from the RUCs. Yeah, Unitarian, but Arias, all the oneness, anyway, oneness Unitarians the, online. The, the Trinitarians are not the Trinitarians. The Unitarians themselves evidently claim Servetus as one of their founders. It could be that they do... Um, See, I have I have in my family uh, people way back in New England um, uh, who were Unitarians. 
so I, I got had some interest in that. But this is a very uh, interesting because Calvin, Calvin, uh, Servetus got Calvin and the other theologians in uh, Europe so upset that they sentenced him to death. Um, I think I think it had a lot to do with politics between Spain and uh, France and Switzerland, perhaps. Uh, Calvin Calvin wanted him. Uh, wanted him he wanted him to be beheaded because he said that was a quicker death and no, less painful but instead he got caught servetus got caught and actually they burned him on a pile of his own books oh wow that is that is to me a total denial of the christian faith that has made me very 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 suspect and suspicious about John Calvin, but that was the atmosphere. That's what that's what disturbs me and bothers me about the debate atmosphere. That if we can't come a, come away as human beings, ex, ex, respecting each other as human beings, we'll end up making those terrible mistakes that they made in the 15th, 16th, 17th century of literally killing people that they were opposed to. I mean, the Christians have blamed Muslims for killing, uh, you know, taking Islam by the sword. But the facts are, unfortunately, that uh, some Christians have used the same techniques to enforce their faith. And that is very, very, that's why I, I told uh, Steve that I'm a Baptist. We are people who've always been persecuted for our our love for religious freedom and the freedom of speech and the freedom of belief we don't we don't accept babies as members of our church because we believe every person has to decide for themselves or be of an age where they understand their faith to be baptized and become believers um, so we differ and we've had per strong persecution and we were among the founding members of the United States because of that, because the Church of England had used the Catholic, the Catholic method of uh, the Inquisition and whatever for people who disagreed with them. That's why I want you guys to be more peaceable toward each other. And I have to scold Steve oh. not, not to get his relatives so fired up and, and uh, upset. I the mean, thing, the thing is, Ray, uh, yeah. Ray, you know, even when, even when I do something nice, like, <laughs> yeah, like I mean it, I'll do yeah. something, you know, like I, like I did, uh, Jesus, uh, you know, says that, uh, you know, that Jesus, who said that Jesus is the son of God, you know, Gabriel said he's a son of God, you know, God said, this is my beloved son, you know, and I, I did something nice like that, totally, and I still get in trouble. I it yeah. Okay. I I accept that that you're really trying, Steve. But it might be you'll have to change the subject. No, no way. That's all I care about, man. I want them to get to <laughs> I want them to get to that. This is what you know. I want them to come to Jesus, man. You don't get it. They, they've got it. They've got. They've got the needle and they're sticking it in you. You see. They know it was the most touchy subject. And so, you know. You know, yeah. for me, when I was a Muslim, the thing I could not stand is to hear someone call Jesus the Son of God. I couldn't stand okay. it. But then yeah. when I got saved, yeah. Jesus came to me, and I knew yeah. he was the Son of God. And so yeah. I, I know that that's important. I know that that's the most oh, important God. thing. It is important. But yeah. in, in, in order for them to understand what you're saying, they've got to have the same experience. And until they do, they're going to oppose you, man. I know it, but I know. But the thing is, is by talking about it, by keeping it out there, you see, that opens the door. I, I believe uh -huh. that keeps the mind open to, to, to hear about it. And to, is that uh, what happened to you? Is yes. That why you, that's, yes. Why, that's why you finally uh, yes. got zapped. You got zapped by the Holy Spirit. Yes, it is true. So, <laughs> okay, all right. So maybe God bless you. Maybe you, you. But the trouble is, is maybe you'd be like Paul. You'd be one of a one of a million rather than a, a movement. 
Well, you know what? Maybe maybe they got to cut my head off first, you know, like they did with Paul. And then because, you know, my name is Hassan. My name is Hassan, and you know what they did to the Hassan? You know, they well, the, last, the last man we had named Hussein, they made him president of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm back. Am I back in? I know. I didn't realize that I was even uh, you, disconnected. You, were, you went out. I don't know what happened. So no, no, because I'm at work, and it's you know, signal is not so good, especially yeah, Monday, yeah. first day, first day of the week. You see, first day of the week, and you know, a lot of work. So therefore, signal is not that good. Hey, anyway, I, I was talking. I, let, I wanted to tell you something. No, Father, let me. Okay, can you let me? Father Zechariah is going to be with me tomorrow at one. I'm sorry, tomorrow. Tomorrow I have to leave early in the morning, so I cannot be. I do apologize. Can okay, I early you? morning. Uh, you're you're the morning. one who says you want to talk to him. So if you wanted no, to, th you'll th thank you on. very much. Thank you very much. Tomorrow yeah. early morning. I if you want to be. On, you can. Uh, you can talk yeah. to him. So. If you inshallah, if I will be able to come. I will come. Inshallah. Can I listen in? Anyway, I'm sorry. Can I listen in tomorrow? Oh, please, please listen in, and then afterwards, uh, maybe you can come on. Yeah, and talk the thing is, is how do I get in? The same way as this to be the yeah. same time network. Be live on Facebook and on, on and on YouTube. So yeah, please do because I know that the guys at that meeting were talking about Father Zechariah. So yeah. Hey, uh, can I say something here before I will be disconnected again? Please, Father Ray. Yeah, okay. thank you very much. Brother Ray, I just want to share something with you that's one of the most beautiful things that I really, one of the good things that I really learned from the Unitarian. Great. I'm sure, that, I know, I'm sure that you know the difference that's between Hothios, Tonthios, Karyos, that's the Greek words, the original uh, yeah. in the Bible. Some. Theos, Theos is the original sure. or God to worship. Sure. worship. Tonthios is the false God. Curios is the Lord, which means master. Yeah. So when I was watching one of their uh, lectures, and they were talking about uh, what do you call Second Peter chapter one verse one, and Titus chapter two verse thirteen, where you Christians trying very hard to say, "Our God and our Savior Jesus Christ." So therefore, is saying clearly that Jesus Christ is God. Yeah. So the answer, that, you see, I love the one, the, the, I mean, the way they refuted this verse. They started by saying, if you go to the earliest and oldest manuscripts of the mm -hmm. Bible, yeah. which they call it as manuscript context, Sinaiticus, it does not say our God, those. Mm -hmm. It says Lord, uh -huh. Theos. Yeah. So they gave the difference between Kyrios and Theos. So the original Greek in the first part, when it talks about God, it says Theos. When yeah. it talks about the second part, it says Kyrios, which means Lord. And they uh -huh. give you an explanation for the word Kyrios in Greek, and they showed you several verses where it was translated as Master, not as God. Uh -huh. In this verse, they translated the word Kyrios to Lord as God. And he showed you actually in the video several different versions of the Bible in English language that yeah. translated Curious as Lord, which means Master, not God. So this is one, you know, this is one of the things that uh, I actually I learned from them how you refute or talk about, uh, you know. Second Peter chapter one verse one and Titus chapter two verse thirteen, which I didn't know about actually that much in the past. Yeah. So therefore, I'm telling you, the argument I always use is talking with those Trinitarian, according to the logic and argument of the Unitarian, because both of them, their argument and their faith is based on the same book, which you call the Holy Bible. Yeah. You see. So when I come sometimes and I say that Jesus is not God, you don't need to say me. So maybe they are a liar. That's a plus for me. You I are, am only quoting what are, other Christians you say. Are. Oh, come now, on. You see, you see now, don't, you see, don't brother Ray, you see now it's in the text. The dragon says, Aladdin, you are blaspheming now. You see, I do too. I'm I quoting what Christians there. That's not what I'm saying, actually. You're, you see, that, that, that's what it is. Steve. You're this, uh, me, you're Aladdin, the Quran. Please, 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 please
اتخذوا اكسكيوز مي اكسكيوز مي ري ليت مي انسر ليت مي انسر هيم يو نو ستيف نو نو بليز اردين اف يو توكينج تو مي اي دونت وونت يو توكينج تو ستيف اوكي بليز اي دونت ابريشيت ذا تو اوف يو جيتينج انتو يور براذر سيستر ارجيمنت Who's the thing you're for? pointing out? Just a minute, uh, Aladdin. I'm 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 following up what he's saying, uh, Aladdin. I have a I can't find my uh, Greek New Testament, but in the footnotes of the Greek New Testament, you will have uh, you'll have multiple uh, what you call textual um, variants for the very thing you're talking about. And uh, Christian scholars have been talking about these things for centuries. The, the, in the seminary, we learn all this, and and it's uh, very possible to use these multiple explanations. My, uh, in the end, uh, I know the Trinity. The, um, for instance, in New England, where my relative lived. They had a church <laughs> that had a joint meeting. They had the the Methodists, the uh, Baptists, and maybe the Congregational and the Unitarians all meet in the same church. But the Unitarians would not sing the doxology because it talked about the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So there were things that the Unitarians would not uh, take part in the service, whereas the others would take part. So these are these are things that are known among Christians all all that I've ever known all my life. Um, but the the wonderful thing about it is is all these names that that they give to Jesus and all the other names. So I assume that you yourself. Give him the same names, which is very, very encouraging for me to know we have so much similar in our faith with each other. The Unitarians are very, uh, very, very much closer. And this Servetus Sir guy, he he had some of the most um, beautiful explanations about Jesus. So I'll send it to you uh, by email. It's a little long. It's Wikipedia, and you know Wikipedia may or may not be valid in all sense, but it'll give you an idea about some of the things that Servetus thought. I'm trying to. In the end, in the end it doesn't change. It doesn't change the fact that uh, Jesus died on the cross, and. Uh, God used this somehow. This is the Injil, the good news, that he used this to take our sins and to satisfy his judgment on man's sin and rebellion. And that through this, somehow this mystery, the cross is a mystery, the Trinity is a mystery, it's a total mystery. Love is a mystery. And uh, This is where we all come out together if we accept the mysteries that God gives us. I think he may be signed off. Maybe is he? Is well, you know, I'm trying to unmute him, but I can't. I don't know. He must have done something. He can't unmute your guest because they chose to mute. Okay, he muted himself. So good. <laughs> good. No, okay. no. He muted himself, man. I can't undo it if he muted himself. Yeah. And, uh, And you know, and the, you know, it's like the Bible says, you know, Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah. Can you hear me, please? Can you hear We, me, Ray? Go ahead, uh, Brother Ray. I'm having a discussion with you, Steve. I didn't mute myself. Actually, I don't yeah. know how to mute myself on the cell phone. I'm using my cell phone. So please, with all due respect, you don't. Know while I'm talking with Brother Ray. Okay. Please. Well, you're in my house. You don't have to do that. No, uh, please. I, I I have a much respect for him, and it was with all due respect to you, uh, I don't disrespectful so. to Ray and to me. If you just mute me like this for no reason, I didn't hey, say something wrong. No reason. You won't let me talk. I, but no, go ahead. I was, talk Ray to told Ray told you and me to stop talking. He wanted to, so I stopped talking. So please, you please, never. If stop you don't want me, 
<laughs> no, I was trying to get Steve to stop, but I didn't succeed. <laughs> so what he what he did, he muted me and he kept talking. Okay. Anyway, you two guys, you, you're so like. Oh, let me say something. No, no, let, 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 let me say something, Steve. Please, please. If you are inter if you are not interested in me talking with the brother Ray, just tell me not to come, and I will not come, and I'll make you happy. And as simple as this. You don't have to mute me, please. Okay. Just tell me go. And I'll tell you, thank you very much. I am sorry if I offended you. And I will go in peace. As yeah, I came in peace, I live in peace. Wallahi, I mean it. I'm serious. Now, Brother Ray you're it, you're brought up peace. Brother Ray brought up three points, and I would like to address them. Please, Brother Ray. So I hope that you allow me. First one, you said that. Prophet Muhammad says, if you were in doubt, go and ask the people of the book or the people of the scripture. That's number one. Yeah. Number two, you spoke about Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Number three, the verse that Steve is very, very happy with and he always quote, uh, Allah wal Allah so al Masih is Allah from the Holy Quran. So please give me a few minutes to answer that. First of all, what you quote from the Holy Quran فَإِن كُنْتَ فِي شَكٍ مِمَّا أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ فَاسْأَلِ الَّذِينَ يَقْرَؤُونَ الْكِتَابِ Up to the end of the verse. That's in chapter 10, verse 94. Actually, this verse does not serve any Christian. This verse is against you, not for you. Because oh. Allah was telling Prophet Muhammad, if you were in doubt in any way, go and ask the people of the book. Now, the question here, did Prophet Muhammad ask them? No, he didn't which means that he was never in doubt. Number two, ask them about what? I hope that you will read the tafsir and interpretation of the whole Quran. Ask them about the prophecy about you in their box. Ask this who accepted you as a prophet of Allah from among the people of the scripture. Where does it, ask say, them about, where does it say that? It doesn't say tafsir, that. Tafsir, tafsir. About, yeah. about what we yeah. have written down. Listen, 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 listen. Steve, let me speak, please. Yeah, you, you are asking me. You are yeah, asking me about my Islam. You don't teach me Islam, please. Uh -huh. You don't well, interrupt me. Teach me Christianity either, man. And you, but you don't teach you Islam see, because you're not saying. I, I, that I said I, okay. I learn always from Steve. Hey guys, I'm, I'm uh, very tired, and I will leave this meeting now if you two don't. You know, Steve, please give him a chance, and I'll uh, if you please. Every keep time it. he comes on, you give him a half hour. He never shuts up. Man. Well, no, no, no. I don't have the time. I I don't have the strength to uh, listen to too much of this. So you could be both, uh, Steve. If you could give him a chance to be concise. Dude, I've been giving him a half hour. He never shuts up, man. Well, no. Right now, we're wasting each other's time. Okay. Okay. And I'm not. I'm. I'm really not strong enough to be wasted. So can Thank I go you. on, please? La but you, if, go? You, if you will not leave me in suspense, what was it that um, that the people were in doubt about? You mean about the prophecies of the coming of Muhammad? Is that what you're saying? This is all about. I'll, uh, that's no, what I'm saying. What I'm saying that all tafsir and all interpretation of the Holy Quran says, go and ask those from among the people of the Scripture who accepted you as a prophet of Allah. Why did they accept you? And they will answer you that they accepted you because they found prophecies about you in their scripture. So therefore, they accepted you as a prophet of Allah. Okay, good. And so what? That, that's what that, that, that's that's the explanation. That's the good. explanation for it. Okay. So, number two, you spoke what? about Rahman and Rahim. Yeah. Which we spoke about in the past, me and you. But yes, I don't know if right. you remember or not. Yes. And I told you what is the meaning of Rahman and Rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran 130 times Bismillah 113 except in chapter 9 there is no Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim we call it Al-Basmala so in chapter 1 it is verse number 1 it's a verse of the Holy Quran so what yeah. is the meaning of Rahman and what is the meaning of Rahim yeah. Rahman it's talking about the mercy of Allah in this life in this world and how he spread his mercy in all his creation Muslims and non-Muslims, human, animals, any creation. So that's the meaning of Rahman. Rahim is the mercy of Allah, the life hereafter upon his followers who accepted him and they will enter paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divided his Rahma or his mercy to 100 parts. He delivered one mercy out of this 100 to this life 
and he called it as Rahman, which he is using all over his creation. It's only one out of 100. But in the life hereafter, in the day of resurrection, he will use this one, including the 99 Rahma also, 100 as Rahim over those believers who believed him and accept him and accept the Islam. So okay, this so is the meaning the of Rahman. I, 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 I said what? that the I said the word Mahabba adds to the whole idea that you're speaking about. That God Himself would give Himself on behalf of man. That's Mahabba. It's, it's undeserved love. Undeserved. Anyway, I don't. Oh, I'm, I haven't got. The, I haven't. I haven't understood what's the difference between what you're saying and what I'm saying. No, what I'm saying is I'm giving you the meaning of because you quote Rahman and Rahim. So yeah, I'm giving no, you no, the meaning. I would, of, uh, I would go even deeper than this. I would say the whole idea of Rahman or Rahim comes from the root word of a Rahim, which is the womb, is, is the comfort. Rahman. Yeah, it's, it's the comfort, the most caring part of, of nature is the womb and this this from this point radiates out then the word becomes uh, very derivatives of the word becomes rahman rahim there's a feeling here more than the intellectual understanding that that god has he has love he has mercy he has compassion and i believe that is shown in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, and the coming of the Spirit into the hearts of the believers. He's the comforter. I know the Muslims use this as a pretense of the coming of Muhammad. That's, that's, a, that's their opinion, but it's actually quoted in the book of Acts as proof of the coming of Jesus. So we have a difference of opinion on that, but that's already been used in the New Testament that, uh, 600 years before the Quran or before Muhammad, but there's no problem. I, I don't have any, you know, it's not a big issue for me. So then uh, the third point was? Okay, uh, can I make a comment, please, when you speak about Mahabba? Actually, the word Mahabba is mentioned in the Quran about the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said Which that word? he is Mahabba. Yeah, I'm giving it to you, inshallah. Please, in that's Taha, great. Yeah, in Surah Taha, Verse uh -huh. 39, which is chapter 20, verse 39. Great. Allah says in that, I, I, I will read it in Arabic, inshallah. At the end <laughs> of the verse, Allah was talking about Moses. Allah says, وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً مِنِّي مَحَبَّةً مِنِّي Which means, Great. I, Great. Allah, myself, made you an object of love, mahabba that comes from me. So That's Allah here declared God's that he, yes, most, his mahabba. Yes. So Allah says that he, ha he has mahabba and he throw this mahabba and give it to Moses alayhi salam. Excellent. Throw Moses. That's see, that's so excellent. the word mahabba actually, actually one of them. Now, as you said, Rahman and Rahim is also mahabba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about mahabba in the Holy Quran also as Rahim. And you read this also in Surah Hud, verse 90, which is Chapter 11, verse 90. Allah says, ever merciful and ever most loving. So Excellent. Allah here connected his mercy with his love. Excellent. So he's telling you that mercy is part of his love. Yeah. You understand? Great. So that's, that's great. You see, you see, that's the things that we're talking about. And Allah also connected again his mercy and his forgiveness with his love. And you can read this also in Surah Al-Buruj. Verse 14. Uh, baby, you and I will establish our own religion soon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. No, I'm trying to share something with you. I learn from you. Every night. <laughs> I, wallahi, I learn much from you and I respect you. Thank you. I admit that I learned so well, much. I'm, from learning, you. I'm learning from you I now. Am. I'll check on it, but I'm learning. <laughs> you see, I can give you a lot of verses that spoke about Mahabba of Allah in the Holy Quran. Which unfortunately many non-Muslims says that there is no mahabba in the Quran. The word yeah, I'll have to get out the yeah. and see also. You see, that's, that's why I'm giving you the verses 
And there are so many verses, actually. You can read again also about this in chapter 5, verse 54. Great. You see, it says, Allah, Great. the people whom he loves and whom love him. He's talking about the people that he gave him his mahabba, Great. and they gave their mahabba back to Allah. You see, Great. you can read it. A lot of verses. Now, the last Great. point. This which, is what I, Habibi, this is what I'd like to see in the Muslims and more in the Christians, too. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. That's great. Alhamdulillah. And I showed you now several verses that Allah actually showed us his mahabba and he told us to share this mahabba with the non-Muslims, especially with the Christian. Excellent. I'll give you an example. Chapter 5, verse 5. Me as a Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed me to marry a woman from the people of the scripture, which means a Christian or a Jewish woman. Brother Ray, can you imagine any love in the world? more beautiful than the love that you have and share with your wife and your children. That's the beauty of love. So right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow me as Muslim <laughs> to share this huge amount of love with a Christian woman and a Jewish she, woman uh, and have children with her. When you married or she became a Muslim? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So that's what I'm showing you. How can me as a Muslim share my love with a Christian lady. With a Muslim lady. can live with one at another with love and harmony. Why didn't you become a Christian instead of her becoming a Muslim? Why, why can't you become a Muslim instead of becoming a Christian? I'm a Christian. <laughs> love her so much. It'll, it'll all come out all right, Steve. Please. No, please it won't. Be patient. No, it won't. If they don't come let God work. Don't don't tickle their demons, man. Don't tickle their demons, you know. No, well, you know, I'm demons. Thank you very much. Be clear on the gospel, man. Okay. Not, now you accuse you accuse me of being no, a demon. No, Thank you very much. That's, that's Steve's. This is very sensitive. No, Steve, I didn't, so I didn't I regard him. him being a demon. I accuse you of having demons. Yeah. Okay, Allah. Uh, please give me your third yeah. point because I've got to go. I got to spend some part of my evening okay. with my beautiful wife. <laughs> so I'll be in a good yeah, mood yeah. to go to bed. <laughs> God bless you and your wife. Yeah. God bless you both. I will pray for both of you. You know what I like about you, Brother Ray? Once it comes to religion, you should not be emotional. Don't let your emotion control you. You control hey, your hey, emotion. Me and see if you could be with me and not be emotional, Ala. Uh, Maybe life, life hey, is still religion and emotional. See how I you, you gotta have both, particularly with women. Exactly. So you can use your emotion in the you can use your emotion in the right time and the right place. There you go. See? Like, oh, like, like you. You are not emotional here. You are an academic man, so you don't use your emotion because you know no, it's no, not I the do. right time and place to be emotional. I and wish I could do the same for okay. Malish, okay, Kim, please, That's please. Okay, don't worry, don't worry. I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Now, number three. Because you get to talk forever. That... That's why you enjoy it. Because you let you talk forever. <laughs> that's why you enjoy it. Uh, Come on, babe. You guys are giving me a heart pain, chest pain, okay? I want to finish with this. No, actually, up, he, just, okay? he, just ins he just insulted me, but it's okay. I forgive him. No yeah, but, um, I'll see yes, okay. yeah, he just cursed me in Arabic, so it's okay. Yeah, I forgive him. Yeah, Habibi. I have no problem with that. Let him say whatever he wants. It's okay with me. I understand his feelings. You're on so my, his you're frustration. my house, man. Just keep talking and get done. Steve, I am sorry if you feel frustrated because of me. I'm I do apologize you. to you yeah. in front of everybody. Okay, that's what guys, my intention. Look, look, don't make me leave you guys now. I won't stay. I won't allow to finish his third point. Okay. Uh, the last the last point I hope that Steve will be quiet and he will not talk, which is chapter that he always keep quoting, misquoting from the Holy Quran and which the Quran so to clear. prove that Jesus is Jesus is Allah from the Holy Quran. Let me please I'm talking to Brother Ray. Can I finish, please? Uh, if you want to keep interrupting me, I will go. Just carry on. For you. you know, I don't need you. I don't need you to tell me. Don't teach me my Islam. I will teach you my Islam. Uh -huh. Let us talk about it. Chapter 9, verse 31. <sighs> Can you hear me, Brother Nine. Ray? Please. I'm sorry. Go ahead. 9. Okay. Chapter 31. 9, verse 31. Yeah. 
you know, people like Steve and those non-Muslims are trying to go to you. Or he brings his point. He will not let me yeah, speak. And so, and so when when I say something about you, you start crying and you want to push go to Mahalib. But, but uh, look, uh, look, Steve, I'm sorry, man. I'm really <laughs> embarrassed to get up and leave this meeting. And I'm going to do it if you talk anymore and don't oh, laugh. You talk me. about me. You, you never stand up for me, Ray. How come you never stand I mean, up for me? I mean, I stand up for you. I'm, I'm on your meeting now. I'm he's broadcasting he's over the world. Me. He's insulting me, and you don't stand up for me. For him, you always stand up for him, but you never Look, stand up I don't understand your gibberish between you and him talking like a bunch of schoolgirls, okay? Yeah. Just yeah. stop it. Stop yes, it. Sir. Let, him, let him get his point gun, and so I can go to bed. Yes, sir. Thank you. Can I go on, Brother Ray, please? Yes, please do. Uh, once again, I am sorry, Brother Ray, if I offended you in any way or if you. <laughs> you haven't offended me yet. Please forgive yeah. me. Please <laughs> forgive me. worked pretty hard, but you haven't done it. Okay. Okay. Uh, the verse that he quote from the Holy Quran, chapter 9, verse 31, which he posted in the screen in front of us. Yeah. Is that, is that no. something I brought up? I'm sorry. No, no, that's, they keep bringing up always when you are here, yep, when you are not I'm, here. I'm sorry, I, I did not hear it, and I wasn't involved in that, so you, you just do. You, you he just brought it a while ago. He brought it a while ago when you were with him. Steve brought that uh, verse a while ago, yeah, when you were with him. You're, you guys' ears are much better than mine, but go ahead and finish. So I, I'm sorry, I really, really am very tired. Okay, can I finish this one in a couple of minutes? Then you may go to sleep and have to go back to work. Can, yes, if not, then Thank we'll you very much. God time. bless you. Thank you. Let's read the verse, which is chapter 9, verse 31. They are telling you always that Jesus is God from the Holy Quran, according to this verse. Yes. So if you, as a Christian, acknowledge and admit that the Holy Quran, admit that Jesus is God, so why don't you become a Muslim? Because Quran, according to you, does not contradict your faith. So say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and become a Muslim because according to you, that does not contradict the teaching of the Bible. But deep inside you, you will never do that because you know that what they are saying is not true, it's false. Now, what is the meaning of the verse? When you read, grammatically, we have what we call in grammars, in the Arabic grammars, conjunctions letter or conjunctions word. And the letter between Allah, he, well, Messiah is wow. In English, it is and. We call this a conjunction letter. Now, if the word that come after the conjunction letter, wow, which is and, at the end, end up with what you call vowels, fatha, like sounds like a, ah, so the words before it, which Al Masih referred to should sound also vowel as a ah, exactly like Al Masih. Oh. That's what we call harf al atf. See, I'm teaching you grammatically. So the conjunctive letter wow and next to it Al Masih end up with fatha, which like ha, not he. <laughs> so Al Masih. Al Masih should refer to a word which end up with fatha which is ahbara wa ruhbana. But Allah yeah. end up with kasra. The vowel is under, it's not at the above of the word. In al-Masiha, the vowel at the top is not under. So al-Masiha should refer to the word which has the vowel at the top, not under. The word Allah, vowel is under. So al-Masiha cannot be referring to Allah according to the conjunction letter. Because al Masiha end up with mm -hmm. Fatha, like Ahbara and Ruhbana. So yeah. therefore, al Masiha goes to Ahbara and Ruhbana. It doesn't refer to Allah, as they always claim, grammatically, which actually they do not know about. That's Arabic yeah. grammar. Okay. Uh, you're getting into a discussion that's far beyond my pay, my pay grade. Okay, I am sorry. I will go and I will let you see. No, no, no. Stay, stay. Just a minute. Thank you, bro. I'm talking now. I heard today. I thought I heard today that someone who has talked about the ahraf in the Quran that these were these were put in 
years later in the text. So the, whoever did the Ahraf, according to their theology, pointed the text. So I'm sure that there are differences maybe in the Ahraf. Maybe what you're saying has validity, but I'd like to know exactly what is the point you're making without uh, all the for, uh, 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 Brother Ray, uh, you are not talking about Ahraf. Ahraf is different than Vols. Ahruf in English, I think the meaning of Ahruf is diacritical, diacritical mark. That's Ahruf. Yeah, that's vowels. Yeah, those vowels. Yeah, yeah, those vowels. They were added later to the transcription of the Holy Quran. Yeah, okay. they were added to the transcription of the Holy Quran later on because there are so many of non Arabs who accepted Islam and they couldn't read the Quran without the vowel. So therefore, they bought the vowel for them. So it will make it easier people for them like, to people like read the Quran. Understand it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, what do you call them? Ajami, Ajami, which means non-Arab. Yeah. So what is the point? I mean, I get me get, make it short and to the point. No, no, no. The point, the point, uh, the point I was trying to make. They are referring Al Masiha in the verse to Allah they were, out of ignorance. They are they not referring it to Ahbara or Rohbana. Okay, well, this is a discussion we talk and do some other time. I, I must take your leave, friends. I appreciate your chance to be able to talk to oh. each other. Thank you. Thank right. you, brother. Thank you, brother well, Stephen. Once yeah, again, yeah. I am sorry. Stay, God bless yeah. you. And good night, everybody. Good night. Ah, he ran away, everybody. Okay, Steve, leave him alone, man. You know what, though? He wants to come on my channel. It's not fair that I don't get to, to, to respond to him. I know yeah, that he's talking. Talk. Look, I'm a, I'm a little bit, you know, he is talking with me. I mean, I, so I didn't well, realize he was well, going to bring in this thing about your discussion, so I'm sorry. Okay. So, uh, yes, I understand uh, your friends are writing notes to me at the bottom. I understand this is a, is a spiritual situation. It's not a matter just of the intellect. I, I it is a spiritual situation, and I understand that there is a lot involved here regarding the spirit. And uh, this is where I emphasize the, the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of love. It's this, he's the way, the truth, and the life. It, it involves the way, which is the way we walk and live and talk. It involves the truth, the actual factual historical events and words spoken that speak truth. And the life is the life eternal, both here and in the life to come. So I wish God's blessing on all of you. And thank you, Steve, for the opportunity to come on to your esteemed broadcast. I respect you very highly. Even though as a brother, I take the opportunity to scold you occasionally because of my age, my, my superior age. <laughs> well, that's okay. If it's from you, it's okay because I know your <laughs> I know your heart. And, uh, and you would probably, if you got together with my children who are about your age, they would you would have a great time in scolding me. <laughs> We need to tell them we need to get together because we're all getting spanked by you. And so it's like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I thank you, Brother Ray. I get, you know, I, I, I find, I'll tell you, I, there, there comes a point when somebody is saying something that is wrong. And when they are in my house, on my channel, saying something that is wrong and <laughs> And pushing it, I feel like I need to respond sometimes. Look, it's it's when to respond. The only question is when to respond. If they're talking with me in politeness to me because of my age and my my mind is a little slower than yours, I don't think then you wait. You make a note and then wait till later and respond when it's fresh. But you know what, Brother Ray? Uh, there is no later because uh, you, you guys both leave and then I, I'm left in no No, no we're not. I, I wasn't gonna leave, but I just about did because I couldn't get anything in. I mean, I let, I mean, I let is the one that I need to talk to, but he doesn't want to speak. Right. And so, but I want to respond to what he says. And so I, I'm, I am gonna respond to what he I says. You don't need my permission. I, I know that, but the thing is, is that 
when he's on, I'd like to respond to him. And he won't come on unless you're here. And so well, he's using me as his shield. Well, he's using me for something too. <laughs> he's using you as a punching bag. But he's making a point. See, he's making a point from from his perspective as a Muslim scholar and teacher. Wannabe, yeah. Well, whatever. Whatever. He's done a pretty good job of it. Pretty good job. He's got pretty good pedigree down there. And so we have to give him, you know, whatever. And we don't have to become we don't have to become offended or afraid. People people listen. They they make their own judgments. These people who are speaking, Aisha and all these people, they know they're listening, so they're making their judgments. But they can't get anyway. I'm I'm speaking only for myself. Okay. God bless you and have a good night. Thank and you. Uh, if you'll send me if you'll send me the link tomorrow. I'll just listen if I if I'm free at one or whatever whatever time I'll, I'll one sure. o'clock, but it's just on Facebook. You can just see it on Facebook. You know my Facebook page. I know, but I won't remember. You can you can oh, give God. me a jab. I love you, brother Ray. I'm sorry Thank if I said that line. I'm sorry. I may have lost my temper a little bit. I'm I'm an Arab. You know that, right? So. Oh yes, I'm back. Okay, God bless. Have a good Thank evening. You. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, Robbie Berkuk, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, hey, Adam, I'm going to send you an invite if you want to come on. Uh, where is it on YouTube? So now is our uh, Lick My Wounds session. So. Okay, Adam, I sent you an invite on, on YouTube. But you guys, I want you to see one thing that uh, I'm actually, I'm really, I'm so happy with what Ray said, you guys. I'm so happy with what Ray said to Alet because uh, Alet was trying to show how that passage 931 doesn't because of the ah uh, and the eh, uh, and, the, and then Ray said, but, but the original Quran didn't have those. <laughs> it was great, man. I was Hello, brother Adam. Long time no see. Hey, man. Yes, I've been a silent listener of your channel, but today I just had to speak up. I've been sending you text yes. uh, to respond to this uh, son of a devil, <laughs> uh, so-called Alauddin, who comes in and blaspheme. Uh, and I know you were very, very angry and you wanted to stop him, but unfortunately you couldn't. And I can totally see that. Now, he created a huge story about this which is nothing more than stupidity in essence, because uh, uh, as you know, and everyone in the world knows that Arabic was not even evolved at the time of when it was being written. Yeah. It was not even evolved that let alone the dots, let mm -hmm. alone the dashes, the dots were not even there. The dots were not even there. So the yeah. dots were added approximately 250 years after. I'll and then it. again, yeah. another 100 years later, these dashes were added. So when these dashes were added, who gave them the permission to put the dash here or there, assuming, yeah. assuming for the sake of argument, that this Arabic lexicon of this uh, son of a devil is what it is, which it is not. So this, what he's stating, you can find only in Quranic Arabic lexicon, nowhere else, not even in the early, early Arabic lexicons, in the classical Arabic, lex you won't be able to find this stupidity. This yeah. is only there in the Quranic. So, so you are telling me that Quran doesn't even follow any Arabic standard. Uh, duh. You guys actually say that Arabic was created from the Quranic Arabic. Then now you are telling me that Quranic Arabic is altogether different than this Arabic and for this verse only. Now you actually destroyed your own religion once and for all. You literally destroyed your own religion once and for all. Now he yeah. actually claims second point brother. Sorry. Mm. I know it's your channel. I don't think so. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, he, I, I just wanted to add one more point over here that he came in claiming things about some scholars of the Bible, which are actually Unitarian scholars, which we don't even consider as Christians, not Christians cool. right? So do you want me to go to uh, Ahmadiyya scholar and use their tafsir for Alauddin? Will he going to accept it? If he will not going to accept it, then why does he wants to teach us Christianity? I so know, he, he should shut his mouth up. He tells me, he tells me, don't come teach me Islam. He says, I'm not here to teach you Christianity, but he is here to teach me Christianity. Exactly. He's <laughs> here to do blasphemy yeah. because he knows with Brother Ray around, he can speak and he can state his stupidity. And that is why he comes up only when Brother Ray is here. And that's the problem. And then he went into tafsir. But when it comes to Rahman, he's not going into tafsir. That is why I told you to open this tafsir right there. But Brother Ray didn't give you the time to do that. And where, it says. Where is it that, that it says that? Because I was reading this. I didn't see what you said. Okay. So open Asbabul Nazul. This is the Asbab Nazul. Okay. On the night in the Makkah, the Messenger of Allah, bless him, peace, stood up on the night while prayer, kept saying in prostration, O beneficent, means O Ar Rahman. Oh, merciful. And so the idolater said, Muhammad used to call upon one Allah. Now he is calling on to two gods, Allah and the beneficent, which is Ar-Rahman. So, uh, wait a second. So, so beneficent, they are translating the word to the translation instead of just saying Ar-Rahman. So we do not know of any by the name of the beneficent means Ar-Rahman, except for the beneficent means Ar-Rahman of Al-Yamama, where the name of the Al Yamama king was Muslima, and Muhammad used to call him Muslima the Kazab, Muslima Al Kazab, Muslima the liar. So Ar Rahman was the pagan god of Yamama, and Muslima was the king of Yamama at that time, and Muhammad used to call him Kazab. So even the Sahabas actually said, Oh Muhammad, you used to call upon one god, which is Allah. Wow. Now you are calling upon two gods, Allah and Ar Rahman. So basically, this is translation, so you cannot see it clearly. Otherwise, in the real sense, Muhammad. So, what happened was, let me give you a more definition. If you read the Siratun Nabi, you will read this definition as well. What happened was that Muslima sent a letter to Muhammad. Okay. In that letter, Muslima wrote Bismil Rahman. Okay, because he said in the name of his God Rahman. When Muhammad responded back, he responded back with Bismillah Ar Rahman. And then Muslim says, What are you doing? You are adding his God name as well. So Muhammad wanted to add his God, God's name as well so that he could feel nicer. This yeah. happened before, right? Yeah. So what is happening? Look at this uh, pagan Muhammad liar and deceiver Muhammad who added the God name just because so that he could convince uh, Al Yamama guy. So uh, the guy from the Al Yamama. Now, even if you look at this as Babul Nazul, which is limited, but you have to go to Tirmidhi and you have to go to as Babul Nazul, forget the letter and the story of all that. But you will know this is just simple stupidity, right? So why would suddenly he will say Ar Rahman? You see what I'm saying, uh, Brother Steve? Yeah, he was trying to compel the worshippers of the Rahman to join him. And so mm -hmm. he was saying their name, uh, you know, and uh, both the Rahman and the Rahim. Yeah, Rahim was added after anyways, later, not in the letter response. So, so because he went into tafsir, then I said, OK, if you want to go to tafsir, then for here, why can't you go to tafsir? And then he went into Muhib Allah and, yeah. you know, Allah's love is limited. You have done a live stream on it, brother. Yeah. Where it is, Allah is saying at least 10 times. Okay, let me just say eight so that I won't be misquoting. La yuhib, la yuhib, la yuhib, la yuhib, la yuhib, la yuhib. La yuhib X, la yuhib Y, la yuhib Z. Yeah. And then Allah <laughs> love. Allah does not love the sinner as well. But Allah does love sin. You know, Allah loves sin. You know that, right? Yes. Allah loves sin because he's Allah said it is the hadith of Muhammad by the inspiration of Allah that Allah, if you will not sin, Allah will 
kill everyone and will create people who would sin who would sin yeah. like yeah so if you are telling me that allah is a loving god then once again why would allah say at least 10 locations that allah does not love hmm. so this blasphemous son of a devil just wants time to preach over here and he wants to speak about uh, our god and then when you say anything about his prophet or his god he'll be like don't tell me about my religion <laughs> this is called hypocrisy okay. he is a hypocrite son of a devil you know what the thing is i told him listen ray's got to go i i begged him i said i let please stay stay cuz i have some questions i want to ask even not He, yeah. runs, he runs away. He runs away. Mm -hmm. But you know what he'll do? You know what he's going to do? I'm going to tell you what he's going to do. He's going to take a video and says, "Look at Steve. <laughs> look at Steve losing his temper. Look, look at Christian. Look at the way Christian looks." So I'm going to be very popular on his channel. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, fine. He he's time. becoming popular on my channel. <laughs> so then, don't even give him a voice when Brother Ray comes in. that's what i will going to suggest to you yeah. never give him a voice to come up in front of brother ray let brother ray preach his whatever he is preaching his topic his subject and let him bark in the text comment don't bring him up don't give him don't give a blasphemous guy point to speak on your channel mm -hmm. don't bring him up you you will not be called a coward or anything because of this blasphemous comments on the live stream let him say that let your moderators delete his comment he's a blasphemous person let him be let him stay there where the dogs should be that he will not get a voice allow the person who wants to speak in respect come up live if a person is blaspheming and trying to tell you that your christian scholars this whom we do not even accept as christians do not give that kind of a stupid a voice he's using your channel to to voice his opinions because he can in front of brother ray that's it oh. well thank you guys <laughs> you know <it's> like, <laughs> but i want to say one thing i really want to say this I want to say this because I'm this is one thing that you guys that is a very nice thing. It was like, you know, I got into a lot of trouble for the my debate with Nadir Ahmed, but one good thing came out of it and that is he admitted that Satan put words in the mouth of Muhammad. Well, the thing that the thing that came up tonight which I was really surprised because you guys we got a really nice chunk really nice side of beef today and i think that we need to celebrate it and so i'm going to tell it to you and then go celebrate however you celebrate the way i'm going to celebrate it is i'm going to go to del taco and have dinner and so <laughs> del taco <laughs> del taco is your celebration man come on brother del don't do that del taco <laughs> like my wife it 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 cooks for me it and it, it, it takes all my money <laughs> <laughs> but uh no I just want to say that on this particular thing I let the one that brought it up it was his third point this verse you guys for those of you who don't read Arabic it's that the bottom of the ben hum or babin and doing all of chapter and verse chapter, chapter and verse. verse 31 which says they mm -hmm. took their rabbis and monks as lords in place of Allah and Christ And so mm -hmm. you know the thing is I did this long lengthy thing I don't know where he got it Man, but it, I know it, it. Was very impressive but the thing is is that Ray came back and and said but you but you guys didn't have all these lines and stuff that you're talking about because everything oh, you oh. these lines and then he said you guys didn't have that at the beginning And when Ray said that, I said, "Praise God, man!" I know it. It was like, "Yay!" Yeah, well, yeah. he really did good. I was this real happy. Is worth celebrating, you guys. Yeah. This, uh -huh. this, I tell you, if nothing else, in tonight. Those are those nuggets, you know. We, we got to celebrate every little victory, and this <laughs> was a major victory because I let mm -hmm. brought it up, and Ray put him in his place and said, yep. "You guys didn't have those lines," and and I was. 
I was going to argue it from another place, but, you know, I couldn't get in. But the thing that Ray said was perfect. You mm -hmm. didn't have, because what I was saying was the ha and the he and the uh and the e goes back to the bottom. But the thing is, they weren't <laughs> in the Quran. They weren't in the Quran. And, and Ray pointed it out. And so praise yeah. to God. That was a great victory, you guys. So Yes, I, it really was. Hey, hey brother, I think that's uh, what we're looking for, is especially with Ray. Is Ray knows how to kind of say you know, the words to him that yeah. it finally stops him in his tracks. You know what? He really did. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I got to say that. He really mm -hmm. does stand his ground. And he does it in a different way. Mm -hmm. He does it in a different way. And he does it, I think, I don't want to say in a better way, but he does it because he doesn't lose ground. But he but he knows how to engage without doing what I do, you know, which is losing my temper and going crazy. And so, <laughs> you know. but uh, Yeah, what's up with that, Steve, anyway? <laughs> I, I just, I, I'm, I'm you have a to stay in Christ now. They kick me no, out. No, that's flesh. <laughs> it's all good, honey. Yeah. Hey, Steve, uh, good. show my screen. Okay. I want to add something over here. Okay. Because uh, when you were having a debate with uh, Nadir Ahmed, he said that Siratul Nabi by Ibn Ishaq does not state that. Okay. okay. And then, obviously, in the debate, you didn't have to go to that point, And I totally understand that. But I want to bring it to all the audience that even Siratul Nabi by Ibn Ishaq, this is Siratul Nabi by Ibn Ishaq, does say that. Hey, can I, can I just, I, I just want to provide background because this was a major, major victory when yes. with, with Nadir. This was an amazing side of beef. I was expecting a hamburger from Nadir Ahmed. I got a side of beef from Nadir Ahmed because he did not deny that safe, you know, you know, you know, guys. What I told, what I told Nadir Ahmed is that he was saying that the the prophet of Deuteronomy eighteen eighteen is Muhammad. Well, in Deuteronomy eighteen fifteen, God says, "I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet." God says that I will put my words in the mm -hmm. mouth of the prophet. Well, I told I told Nadir Ahmed the problem is is that according to uh, the, I had the Tabari, not the not the Sira, and I said according to a Tabari, it says that. The devil, Satan, put words in the mouth of Muhammad. And so it's not God putting words. It's Satan putting words in the mouth of Muhammad. So how could he be the prophet? And the thing is, never, Ahmed never denied it. He didn't say, well, it's da'if or it's, it's you know, made up or it's something. He just said, oh, but the prophet didn't intend to say it. <laughs> he didn't intend to say it. He said it, but he didn't intend to say it. And I said, oh, my gosh. But he said that it's not in the seerah. He said it's not in the biography of Muhammad, and that's what Adam is going to show us now. So anyway, Adam. Uh, he said in the in the biography, it is written differently, okay. and that is why I'm going into the biography. It starts from uh, page number 65, and it says that now the apostle was anxious of the welfare of his people, and etc., 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 etc. He longed so much, and etc., etc. Then what happened? Because of his love for his people and his anxiety over them, it would delight him if the obstacle should be removed. So that he meditated on the project for long. Then God sent down by the star when it sets your comedy, etc., etc., etc. But when he reached his word, have you thought of Allah, al Luzza, and al Matad, the third? The other, Satan, when he was meditating upon it, desired to bring it. And what did Satan do? Now, the problem is Muhammad was a small little pagan for that time. Okay. To his people put upon his tongue that these are the exalted Gharakins, Gharanik. Gharaniks, whose intercession is approved. When Qurayshis heard that, they were delighted and greatly present. With he spoke about their gods. You remember, remember their gods yes. and they listened to him while the believers were holding that what their prophet brought them from the Lord was true, not suspecting a mistake or vain desire or a slip of tongue. When he reached the prostration at the end of the surah in which he prostrated himself, the Muslimin prostrated themselves. 
with their prophet prostrating confirming what he brought and obeying his command and the polytheist of the quraish and the others who were in the mosque prostrated when they heard the mentioning of their god so god. everyone you know this is this one's even stronger because mm -hmm. the authority says the devil iblis but here it says satan put the word yes. in his mouth and yes, so uh, that is just which book is this adam this is siratun nabi <coughs> By Ibn Ishaq, so the that everyone. That link? Yes, I will. So everyone you, in the mosque, believer and I unbeliever, prostrated, except for yeah. these two people because they were too old. Mm -hmm. So they took the handful of dirt and put them on their head. That is fine. So they were actually doing the prostration as well. Then mm -hmm. the people despaired and Qurayshi went out. So now it's not just for a second or one prostration. Now everyone went home. So Muhammad was such a liar and a deceiver. When everyone went home, delighted at what he had brought about their guards, saying mm -hmm. Muhammad has spoken of our guard in splendid fashion. He alleged in what he read that was exalted Gharaniks, whose intercession is approved. So all of these pagan deities became guard for him. Now, mm -hmm. what happened? The news mm -hmm. reached the Prophet's companion who were in Abbasi. So now you are talking about Makkah Medina and then it reached all the way to Abbasina. Now imagine how much difference. So it's like days. It bring reported that Qurayshi had accepted Islam. So some men started to return while others remained behind. Then Jibrail came to the Apostle and said, what have you done, Muhammad? <laughs> so imagine that, that this whole story happened days later when the Qurayshis have accepted the religion where their gods are the same as Muhammad's God. Then Jibrail came. Allah was sleeping for many days. He was sleeping. He didn't wake up. He did not wake up for many, many days. Allah only woke up when everyone accepted his religion with the Allah al Uzza and al Manat, the message read all the way to Abbasina, people started to come back. And now, what happens, man? It happens. Whoever changes his religion, kill him. So now, now they cannot even, even uh, get away from Islam. Wow. So basically, you get into Islam. But if you change your religion, you will you are killable. Yeah. So, man, look at this deception of Muhammad. You and have read the people that did not bring you. I did not bring you from God, you know, and in you guys, if you haven't watched what Nadir Ahmed said at this point, when, I, when we did, you know, what Nadir Ahmed said, you know, it's where it says here that Satan put words in the mouth of Muhammad. Nadir Ahmed put words in the in the mouth of Muhammad because Nadir Ahmed said, and Muhammad, when he realized what he did, he said, "I I I was used by Satan." <laughs> That's what Nadir Ahmed said. <laughs> That's not even here, but he said that. And dude, it's like you can't deny it. It's in the sources, you know, and and it's in about fifty sources. You guys, it's not just a tabari and. and and, and the theater. It's in over 50 sources. This wow. story. And why would it be there? Why would... Uh, Tabari is one of the most respected Islamic historians. Uh, Ibn Ishaq was the first biographer closest to the lifetime of Muhammad. Why would these guys make this story up? Unless they didn't make it up. And it's true. And... And by the way, the, the, the only reason why I brought this Seerat nabi by Ibn Hisaq, because Nadir said that in the Seerat nabi by Ibn Hisaq, you will find out that Muhammad did not want it. And Muhammad was so sad about it. Yeah, yeah. But if you look at the Seerat nabi by Ibn Hisaq, it is the same story with even additional stuff that tells that it was not just for a short amount of time. It was for a long amount of time. So Muhammad was a pagan bowing down to pagan gods for a long, long time. time. Yes. And you know, you know what you got, you, you know what makes this story 
for me, all of this stuff is like, you know, it validates that this did happen. But the thing that's the strongest, and it was on that page you just took, is that there's actually a verse in the Quran. Yes. And the verse says, Surah Allah takes out what Satan puts in. And you think, uh, you guys, please, if you're a Muslim, please listen to what this says. It says that Allah takes out what Satan puts into the Quran. Whatever Satan mm -hmm. puts in the Quran, Allah takes it out. He abrogates it. That's one of the abrogation verses. And mm -hmm. how could you have a verse like that in the Quran? Allah, Satan put something into the Quran? Allah, where'd you go, Habibi? Come back. Come back. We need you, Allah. Please explain this to us. How does Satan put something into the Quran? Because it says Allah mm -hmm. takes out what Satan puts in. That's a verse of Quran. And yeah. and this is not just it. Let me share my screen again, brother. I'm sorry. I'm gonna. I, I don't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna demolish it. this fully. So if you read this verse now, it is Quran chapter number uh, Surah Hajj chapter number twenty-two, verse number fifty-two. Let me just zoom out a little. So what it is saying? Umar salna ka min kablik kablik ka min rasooli wala nabi wala nabi illa that we have never sent a messenger before you who yeah. has not recited from the Satan. <laughs> so basically to protect wow. Muhammad, he, rather, he, 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 de he demeaned and, and destroyed the reputation of every other prophet. Every other yes. prophet. So to Muhammad, make, to Muhammad, everything look even. Mm -hmm. to, yeah, to Muhammad just to say that, okay, I, I was an idiot pagan <laughs> for some amount of time he gave this verse to people hey look jibrail just told me that every prophet received satanic revelation Jeez. but if you look at in quran even no other prophet received satanic revelation mm -hmm. and according to quran itself if we talk about isa of quran he had the revelation the scriptures full scriptures when he was just a baby in cradle. When he was just a baby in cradle. Yeah. He had the whole scriptures. It says. It says clearly. That Isa. Had the whole scriptures. When he was just a baby. You yeah, know. Doesn't it say taught him. That he taught him even the gospel. No, and, and the scriptures. Exactly. So he had the mm -hmm. scriptures. Now that's what I'm saying. He had the scriptures mm -hmm. when he was just a baby. So if you read, let me just go there. Uh, so, then, so then if he was given, if Jesus, if Isa was given those scriptures, that means that what Satan had given was also given to Jesus. No, so no, that no, would no, negate. That no, would negate. Connie, hold on. You are not, not getting my point. I'm telling you that Allah is claiming that uh, Satan gave some revelation to every prophet. Every prophet. Mm -hmm. Whereas, mm -hmm. if we look at Isa of Quran himself, Even he never spoke prophet. anything from the satanic thing. Okay. Never. Or so and so, <laughs> Moses never spoke about anything from the satanic. Abra not. Abraham did that. Basically, mm -hmm. he 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 worshipped the stars and the moons and 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 mm -hmm. uh, everything before he accepted Allah. But when we talk about uh, other prophets, they didn't do that, number one. Number two, mm -hmm. Muhammad received the revelation when he was 40 years of age. So he was a pagan before 40. How was he a pagan? Let me explain that as well before the Muslims started shouting. Muhammad's mother was a pagan. How do we know that? When because Muhammad, died. yeah, because she is burning in hell. Muhammad prayed to Allah, oh Allah, forgive my mother. Mm -hmm. But Allah said, no, I'm not going to forgive your mother. So Muhammad used to cry on the grave of his mother because Allah said, I'm not going to forgive him because she was a pagan. Okay. Muhammad used to cry on the grave of his father because Allah said that he will not going to forgive him. So Muhammad's father and his mother and his uncle, they were all burning in hell. So if everyone who brought up Muhammad were pagans, who was Muhammad before 40? A pagan. Yep. Wow. Right? Now, when we talk about Isa, which is in Quran chapter number 3, 
verse number 45. Let me just go there. 3 slash 45 to 48. We will read that. That Maryam was given a prophecy that, O oh Maryam, Allah has given you a glad tiding of a boy who is the word of Allah and his name, minhu ismuhu, his name will be Al Masih. By the way, Masih is not a name, it's a title. But once again, Allah is always ignorant. So Al Masih, Isa ibn Maryam. All right. And he will be the sign for the world, fi dunya wa akhira, and the world and for the hereafter. And he will be of the Mukarrabin. Okay, now, fair enough. Let's go next. And it says, and when. He will speak unto mankind in his cradle as a person who is a full manhood. So he is speaking in his cradle as a fully grown mature person. Okay. And then we see Kalat Rabbi. And she said, My Lord. Okay. Forget that part. We don't need to go into there. So now we see here that Isa ibn Maryam is talking when he was just a child and he said Allah has given him the scripture let me go to that verse as well <sighs> Surah Miriam yes yeah, Surah Maryam Aya, 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 Aya 19 I forgot the Aya while he's finding that Steve do you see that icon that looks like a little stack of books um, on the left hand side see where it has the little stack of books oh here yeah y y yes sir okay if uh -huh. you'll click that not, not now of course but, uh -huh. but you can click that and then it will allow you to go to English tough sears and you'll see Ibn Kathir or you'll see a couple more and then you can always glance at that just in case, like Aladdin's wanting to say something, That's and it great. generally busts him what he says. <laughs> you know what? You Man, know, I tell you, <laughs> it, it was it was so easy today. It was so easy. You know, <laughs> you know. I mean, to, it, I mean, it. Does, you know what? That argument that he was using about that verse <laughs> about the diacritical marks. It, it was. It was like. Who understands it? He was making stuff up as he was going. Yes. The way Ray just said, you know, you know, those dads, <laughs> they didn't have them. And and that's the perfect argument. And I, I was I didn't think of it. I was I wanted to argue from another place. I just wanted to argue, but <laughs> <laughs> you just wanted to argue. Well, see, when when we just want to argue that it, it doesn't help him at all. But I don't it want may, you know, I don't want to stress out Ray. My concern is Ray. I don't want to stress Right. Out. That's exactly right. Yes. We we want to. But I, I mean, my goodness, he's 85 years old, you know, so we really do need to be easy. Yeah, I found that. But I found another thing before going there because this is another problematic thing. Okay. Uh, so Mariam is away on a place because yeah. she is now pregnant and she wants to be away from Jews so that Jews will not say that you are you are you have done adultery. Mm -hmm. So, what happened is she is near a palm tree. Okay, uh, she withdrew to a separate place. Okay. Nineteen twenty-two. Then we see in nineteen twenty-three, Surah Maryam, verse number twenty-three, and the pain of the childbirth drove her to a trunk of the palm tree. She said, "Oh, I wish I had died before this and was in oblivion forgotten." Now Jeez. imagine that a lady who's giving a birth to a child, let alone. Let alone a miraculous child that Allah in the Quran spoke with Maryam three times in three different locations, mm -hmm. told her that you will be given a miraculous child. Right. That lady is saying before this childbirth, I would have died in oblivion. I would never have been created. Now, yeah. if we look at, yes, if we look at the account of Luke, yeah. Maryam is not Maryam. Yeah. Mary <laughs> is rejoicing and she is singing. Yeah. You know, Luke chapter one. All rejoices in God, my savior. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. She's singing. Yeah. Now, when so imagine the true Mariam, the Mary, should mm -hmm. be singing because she is giving birth to a child 
which is a miraculous child. But once again, here she said, "Oh, I would have died in oblivion." Yes, they they just insult her, yeah. you know, and they say, "Oh, we love Mary, we love her. We even have a chapter called her name." But yeah, look exactly. what they're saying; this, this they're insulting far, her. This this it by far is not the worst thing the Quran says about her. By far, it's not the worst thing. Wow, maybe far, you yes. ought to do a video on that. Let me Steve. give you another one. Let me give you that another would be one. A good in, one. Yeah, let me give you another one. In 1924, mm -hmm. but he called her from below her. Do not grieve. Your Lord has provided beneath you a stream. So now Isa yeah. is calling Maryam from below her means from below her belly. So if you read the Tafasir, you will see below her belly, they represented that the voice is coming from between her two legs, the opening right. between the two legs. Mm -hmm. So Isa is speaking from inside her belly and the voice is coming from the, I don't even want to use that word, okay? Because we have Connie. So remove Connie so that I could use the word. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have that word. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, word you is on my body, so you can say it. Yeah, okay. so the, 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 <laughs> yeah, the thing that is you. on Connie's body, <laughs> that so is the place <laughs> where the voice is coming out. Okay, so so my, so this 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 is how derogatory it is. So if we go even further, now the Isa is being given birth and etc. etc. And then what happens is she brought the baby Jesus to his people. Okay. And the people are saying, what have you done? You have given an adultery boy. Okay. And then what happens? They say, Ya Ukhta Harun, or sister of Aaron. Another big problem. Somebody is sleeping? No, somebody did something. Moved okay. the cup or something. Okay. And then sister of Aaron is another problem. We are not going to go there. So she pointed to the baby who's in the cradle, just a child. And what does the child say? Then Jesus. Jesus says, Kala, Inni, Abdullah. And what does it say here? Satani. And the hair. Wajalni Nabi. No, Al Kitab. Atan Al Kitab. Al Kitab Wajalni and made me Nabi and Prophet. <laughs> so when he is just one wow. day, one hour wow. child. Wow. That is he said, I have been given the book, not scriptures, the book, and I am a prophet. Wow. Okay. So, now, problem is this, that Muhammad was a little pagan before the first revelation came from the Satan. Because the first revelation was also from the Satan. Like how can Jibrail mm -hmm. squeeze mm -hmm. somebody three times that his breath is, he's not even able to breathe. Well, he said it was Satan. Yeah, he knew it was Satan. Exactly. Until he came back and then <laughs> Varaka bin Nofal said, I do not know for the time being. Then Khatija did a... The test of the thighs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what What is that? Like... You know, uh, the, the, in the movies, there is a woman dances on the pole. What do you call that woman who dances on the pole? Stripper. Pole dancer. Yeah, stripper. stripper. Yeah, so Khatija oh, did the uh, strip tease test with Muhammad. And uh, once, the, once she removed all her clothes, then finally Muhammad said, Oh, I don't see Jibrail now. And Khadija said, okay, then it is the Jibrail. It's because the angel cannot see a woman naked. So, <laughs> so that was the test of... Uh, Let me just say one thing here right now. Just because sometimes when you hear these stories, I don't know if there may be a Muslim who's watching and saying, you guys are just making this stuff up. I no, it's in Sirat al Nabi by no, Ibn Ishaq. I know. I know. I just want to tell people, you guys, this is all in the books. It's all in the Muslim books these are well known stories that are in your books and and we're just reading to, telling you what's in your books you didn't know about it but they're there so anyway hey like these muslims who goes into left right can i make a left right please over here okay 
Okay, please don't mind that. And especially Connie, please don't mind that. I may not okay. be, I may not be here tomorrow morning. So yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's me who's saying that, not you. So imagine the Isa of Quran and the Maryam of Quran. Because Muslims are so blasphemous certain times. And you know what I'm talking about. So hence, imagine what is going to happen. So this Isa, who's one day old, now he can speak fully, right? Yes. So when he needs milk, what will he say? Instead of crying, because he can speak as a grown man, what will he say? To Any Maryam. What? To Mary. <laughs> yeah, uh, Isa, Come Isa of Quran. You got Isa of Quran, which is not the Jesus, not the Yeshua. Maryam of Quran, which is not Mary, which is not Mary, because she is the sister of Aaron, so called, and yet she gave birth to Isa. So obviously they are not the real, real, real people, right? They are fictional characters. So once again, because they say about our God, certain derogatory things. And now because we are here on this point, so I'm going to say that out loud. Now, Isa is one day old. He can speak in the cradle. Now he is hungry. What will he say to his mother? Come over here. Get, give me your... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Connie. Uh, can we just like, leave, can we leave it at that, please? <laughs> because because Muhammad yes. Hijab, Muhammad Hijab put up a comment. And in that comment, he used the specific word nipples. So can I be at least uh, uncensored okay. enough to use <laughs> that word? All right, go ahead. <laughs> well, we get it. I think you already got it. Yes. Yeah, we get it. I don't have to use the sentence. Mm -hmm. Right? So yeah. imagine this is how derogatory this, mm -hmm. this uh, newspaper of Allah is. Right. And, and that's why would anybody that's choose this book? Thing. <laughs> that's still not the worst thing about Mary in this in this book. So, you know, it's you know the the other day I was witnessing. I have my table that I go witnessing in Anaheim the other day, and uh, and, uh, and and a, and a Muslim guy came by, and, and you know I started witnessing to him, and he says, "We love Mary and Jesus more than you. We honor them more, more than you." Mm -hmm. And, and then I told them, well, what about where, where it says, you know, and since it was a guy, I could tell him the word and mm -hmm. I'm say it here, but, you know, it talks about her genitals. And uh, I said, how can you say you honor her when you talk? How, I asked him, what if somebody talked about your mother like that? What if somebody talked about your mother like that? What would you do to him? Mm -hmm. How can you okay to talk about Jesus's mother like that? Yes. And how can you Amen. call honoring her, you know? Uh, so what do you say? What do you say? Uh, well, somebody else actually came up right right about then. And <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, Robert Patz, Alauddin has been spanked by me. Now mm -hmm. he runs away from me, left, right, and center. He does not want to come up with me because he proclaimed that the Torah does not, Torah of Quran does not contain additional mm -hmm. prophets and the Torah of Bible does. So I gave him Chapter number six, verse number 82 to verse number 89. Mm -hmm. And I said, Allah has given books to all these people according to your Quran. What are the names of these books and where are they? Since then, he is running away from me, left, right and center. And there is a small video clip on my YouTube channel, Adam Seeker. And it says, it says the same. And then Alauddin said, Hey, I'm so scared of you. I am going. I am bye bye. I'm running away. Since then, whenever he sees me, he runs away like a coward and he does not stay. So that's what Alauddin is because I know how to put him onto his spot. He just comes in and talks to some people whom he thinks that they will get not away be. With his life. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is, mm -hmm. and because, and then obviously certain people has. Okay. Let's, let's different talk, way of ministering. Yeah, yeah. Yes, different people have different way of ministering. 
and i respect that type of ministering as well mm. but once again if somebody like him is talking to me i will put him on his spot first before talking to him with him in a nicer way mm. if somebody comes to me nice i will speak to him nice if somebody comes to me blaspheming raising fingers at my scripture my god i will first demolish his pride break his stiffness and once that stiffness is broken then i will speak with him nicely but that's just me but everyone else has their own way of dealing with these kind of people and hence obviously i will not say anything more than that <laughs> you know you know one thing that uh it's like uh you know uh i've always said my i'm thankful for everybody who's who's witnessing to the muslims how and i know I, i've seen christian prince i've seen uh you know i've seen you know sam i've seen david i've seen you know father zechariah and i've seen all these different approaches and i've seen the others i've seen ray and, and other and many others who are like him and uh i just i'm, I'm so thankful for all of them because everybody's doing something you know and everybody does it differently but mm -hmm. they're doing something and so praise be to God and, you know, may God use, use all of it, you know, and, uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to show that verse you were just talking about the, uh, the 61, 681, 80, 84, six. Okay. Let me show you. I, I have it here. Six. No, it's, it's, it's all seven verses, 82 to 89. Oh, 82 so, to 89. Oh, I so see. let me just show that so that everyone will know what I mean. So yeah. it says, I got to learn this because this yeah, is, let me just reduce the translation so that we can read it very easily. So who, those who believe do not mix their belief in injustice. Okay. And then that was what our argument we gave Abraham against his people. We raise disagree. Okay. First is Abraham. Then what did we do? We gave him, i.e. Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. We guided and Noah. We guided among the descendant of David and Solomon and Job and Joseph and Moses and Aaron. Okay. Then Eli saying and Zacharias and John and Jesus and Elias. Mm -hmm. Then Eli saying and Ishmael and is I it, it means Eunice. How do you read this? Elisha. Elisha and Jonah and Lot. And then Eli is saying and some not some. But like, obviously, if you read the Arabic, you will find that among their fathers and their descendants and their brothers. So not just these people, these 20 people named that Allah already proclaimed. Allah said even some of their fathers and some of their brothers. OK, and then what Allah says in verse number 88, we gave them Huda. OK, we gave them the guidance and Allah's guidance is the best. And then what Allah says in verse number 89. And those are the ones we gave him kita atayna hum ulaika those Allah zina ones whom atayna hum we gave him al kitab wal hikma wal nabuat. So Allah gave books to yeah. all of these prophets, some of their descendants, some of their brothers, and some of their forefathers. Now, if you know what, though, that that word there is is kutub. It's not yes. even though I know they put the line, but the, before they had their diacritical mark, it's kutub, which is plural books, not yes. just one book. Exactly. Yeah. So basically, the whole situation is that since then he is running away from me because I showed him these verses. I said, you proclaimed that the Old Testament should only be the first five books Torah, of Moses. The Torah right? and the Tur, yeah. Yeah, you told me that the Old Testament should only be the first five books of the Moses, not the books of Jobs, not the books of Kings, not the book of any other prophet, not the book of anybody. Now, in your own Quran, Allah is claiming that he gave books, Atayna Humul Kitab, Okay, he gave books to all of these prophets and some of their forefathers and some of their brothers and some of their children. I'm not saying that your Allah is saying that. Now, what are the names of these books? Where are they? Can right. you please provide me the evidence? Otherwise, 
the old testament that we have has the books of all these prophets mm -hmm. now that day since that day he is running away like a coward or a chicken or whatever you may like to call <laughs> and he is not coming up live to give me the answer no. i'm won't. still waiting for his answer yeah I did that video, giving him an opportunity to say thank you. Because remember, he says, if you'll correct me, you know, in my Al-Tafsir, you know, Ibn Kathir, I'll say thank you. Well, I did it. <laughs> and he did, he did my video a thumbs down. <laughs> wow. And says, I don't listen to any of them. <laughs> I don't listen to any of them. And it's like, wow. Okay, so. Then you just lied to Steve. You said, I will say thank you if you correct me. He, he, you didn't, know. he never said that to me, but he. <laughs> he said that to you in that vi in your video. Yes, with uh, with Emmanuel and uh, and Adam. Okay. Your three chord strand one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he told you that. And I took that and I did a video to correct and give correction to Aladdin. And so he told you that in that video. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do a video in it. Exactly. Not like, come on, guys. This 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 guy, Alauddin, is a joke. It's mm -hmm. a joke. Why is it a joke? He uses our scripture and try to teach us, yet he gives the exegesis of some stupids who believe in a Unitarian. Now the problem here is, if you want to give me exegesis, give me the exegesis from Polycarp, from Agnitus, from Irenaeus. I'll know. accept it. Give you, me you the know. exegesis from them. Why do you give me the exegesis from the latest scholars who are Unitarian? I don't care about them. They're not Christians. They're, exactly. Because Thank you. you Brother, say it again. They are not Christians. Okay, uh, write it somewhere. <laughs> well, you know, I'm always saying it, man. This is the, my biggest thing is, is the Trinity, the deity of Jesus Christ, the dual nature of Jesus Christ, the, the fact that he's the son of God. You know, I mean, this is my number one thing that I'm, I'm, I mean, even yesterday I did a video about it. You know, it's just the number one thing for me. And uh, and so, you know, I, I even had, you know what happened? It, you know, it was really weird. And, and I don't know if someone's going to rebuke me. But there was a guy who's, I believe, a Christian or something. And he came on and started telling me, uh, I, oh, I said, Jesus, uh, where the Bible says Jesus is God, you know, or where Jesus says I am God. And, and, and this guy wrote, he says, oh, no, he didn't say that. And, and, and I, I went through, I mean, I did a whole video about it, you know, where he said it, you know. And, and, and the guy said, no, Jesus is not the Almighty. And I said, dude, don't even come back here. I said, don't even come back here until you repent. I don't even want to deal with you. You know, because I'm I'm trying to teach Muslims. They have a wrong Jesus. I want to give them the right Jesus. And you're coming up with another Jesus? <laughs> mm -hmm. So he basically, you are absolutely right on this point. These silly people, they don't comprehend these situations. What we are talking about how we are talking about, and then there are certain Unitarians who come up and proclaim themselves to be Christian, just like certain Ahmadiyyas try to proclaim themselves as Muslims. Mm -hmm. So now, if Ahmadiyyas are not Muslim according to Shias and Sunnis, and Baha'is are not Muslim according to Sunnis and Shias, how can you actually proclaim something to me? Now, by this, I'm going to end it because Alauddin over here spoke a lot. So can you please uh, share this? I'm going to share something for Mr. Alauddin as well. So guys, watch and listen. Enjoy. Stop. Stop. Before you're about to accept Islam, you must listen to me. Listen, listen, listen to me. I'm a revert to Islam. I'm a Muslim myself. But before you take your Shahada, you must watch this. So now, Adam, 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 let me now, school you. Can you relax? I'll school you here. You have to ask questions. No, no, Adam, listen. Adam. I fear now you. Listen. I am afraid now of listen. you. I'm running away from now you. No. So now, Adam, 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 let me now. school you. Can you relax? I'll yeah. school you. You said 
that Muhammad was cutting the entire Torah, then you included Isaiah with the Torah. Oh. Can you know or doesn't say Islam? Allah says for us, Qul hatu burhanakum. Quran does talk about other prophets as well. If you read from 684 to 689, Can I there are so okay? many, there okay, are so are many prophets that, there are so many prophets that it Quran talks oh, about. And in 689 it says, <laughs> Allah gave Quran kitab to all of these prophets <laughs> and in these prophets it's every like most of the prophets are talked about so basically torah is there with all of these prophets otherwise give me the name of the kitab of each and every prophet that was given to them so that's the whole situation so now alauddin speak no no adam <laughs> I, no no adam adam I feel now you. Listen. I am afraid now of listen. you. I'm running away from now you. Listen. Stop. Stop. Before you're about to accept Islam, you must listen to me. Listen, listen, listen to me. I'm a believer to Islam. I'm a Muslim myself. But before you take your shahada, you must watch this. You're idiot. You're stupid. You're dumb. You're dumb. You're following this prophet. Yeah, 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 ye